GCTV's Game of the Week is brought to you in part by Pine Hill Orchards on Greenfield Road in Coleraine is open seven days a week serving breakfast and lunch in the restaurant and in the store there are homemade fruit and cream pies, apple cider and so much more. For event information and what is happening at the farm go to their website pinehillorchards.com Maury and Schmidt General Contractors is your local all service contractor for commercial and residential work. Locally owned by Bob and Robin Provost their work and reputation speaks for itself. For information and to see their work, go to their website, maurianschmidt.com, or call them at 773-3176. Cruise and travel located at Montague Street in Turner's Falls can help you with your next vacation plans. Let Deb and Mary help you through the process on booking your next vacation. At Cruise and Travel, we go the extra mile so that your miles become the best vacation ever. Call them today at 863-3143. Riffs North Restaurant and Bar located at 116 Avenue A in Turner's Falls has the best friend fries in the state. Plus, they have 10 Massachusetts gourmet burgers you must try before you die. Local owner Rich Lyman invites you to stop in and try them. For hours and menu information, go online to riffsnorth.com. Dylan Chevrolet on Main Street in Greenfield is your local hometown dealership with the largest selection of Chevy cars and trucks. They also have the best service department in the valley and an auto body shop too. Locally owned by Tom and Jay Dillon, you always get a good deal every day at Dillon Chevrolet. Thanks folks. Greenfield Savings Bank is your local hometown bank for personal and commercial accounts stop by a local greenfield savings bank location near you with locations throughout franklin and hampshire counties online at greenfieldsavings.com valley steel stamp located at 15 greenfield road in the industrial park in greenfield is locally owned by steve capshaw they are now hiring be a part of something big for job information go to vsscnc.com slash careers franklin first federal credit union located at 55 newton street in greenfield at franklin first federal Federal Credit Union, you always get the best loan rates on home and auto, plus the best service from local people who live here in Franklin County. For more information, go to their website, franklinfirst.com. The Northfield Golf Club, located at 31 Holton Street in Northfield, is a beautiful nine-hole golf course, offering a challenging golf experience seven days a week. Locally owned by the Snow family, they also have a beautiful pavilion for weddings, parties, or any occasion. Contact Shelby for more information at shelby at northfieldgolfcourse.com. Manny's Appliance, 51 River Street in Greenfield has the best selection of appliances in the area with local salespeople who care about you, the customer, with better prices than the big box store. Come in to see their huge selection at 51 River Street in Greenfield. Fitzgerald Real Estate located at 116 Federal Street in Greenfield. Green Fitzgerald knows all about Franklin County and the local market. Let her professional team at Fitzgerald Real Estate help you through the process of buying or selling your home. For information online at FitzgeraldRealEstate.com or call 774-6317. Your local Dunkin' Donuts, locally owned by the Mata family with three Greenfield locations, including two drive through locations on Federal Street and also on the Mohawk Trail. In Greenfield, America runs on Dunkin'. Hey, Connor Wakis, the Frontier center fielder, will lead off for the Red Hawks. Red Hawks, and they're visiting navy blue tops, white pants. Wakis, a right-handed batter, steps in. Kyle Devlin, the catcher, and Owen Phelps on the hill. And the senior right-hander rocks and fires. First pitch a little bit low. Ball one. That looks like Arthur, Book, uh, Arthur Book, uh, Burke is our home plate umpire. It is. Artie Burke is behind the plate looking sharp here. One and oh the count to Wakeus. Here's the windup. And the 1-0 pitch, swung on a miss, strike one, and they count now even at one and one. Greenfield defensively, Joel Peabody in left, David Carey in center, Nate Hazelton in right, will set the infield after this next pitch. One ball, one strike to Connor Wakeus. Here's the windup, and the pitch from Phelps, curve ball just outside, two and one. Greenfield's infield, third to first, Cam Baird, Jared Hart, Ryan Cody, and Hunter Campbell Kyle Devlin catching Owen Phelps. Two balls, one strike to Wakeus. Phelps gets the sign from Devlin. Into his motion. Here's the pitch. Inside, three balls and one strike. Well, right now, Owen's got to get himself back in the groove here. You don't want to walk your first batter here tonight. So, he's going to get back in the groove. This curveball's been very effective. Let's see if the comes back with that. Brian Bauman waits on deck. The windup and the 3-1 pitch. Swung on a miss, strike two, and the count now goes full. Oh, this pitch right there by Owen Phelps. Went down the sheet. Had a little zoom on there, too. 
A little battling back now from 3-1. Count now goes full. Rakis now back in the box. Phelps gets the sign. Into his motion and the payoff pitch. Just outside, ball four. Wakus sprints down to first base and Frontier gets the leadoff man on here in the top of the first inning. A well, little bit outside on that pitch by Owen Phelps, so now you got a leadoff runner here for the Red Hawks. Brian bauman has been hitting the ball very well here, Jeff. Matter of fact, uh, he's averaged two hits a game over the past three games for this Red Hawks team. He's the shortstop, number six, and it's interesting, when he stepped in, I noticed his feet were almost touching the plate, and there's no line there when they set the uh, batter's box. He is up just as far as you can to the plate, so to see if Phelps actually now might want to come inside on him a little bit. I mean, he is right on top of that plate. Here's the set by Phelps, and the runner is going. The pitch is a strike. Long, strong throw down to second base, not in time. Wake of steals on Phelps and Devlin, and now the Hawks have a runner in scoring position with nobody out. Wow, that was a great jump that he ended up having, and Wakus, he flew to second base. Even a nice throw by Devlin still wasn't even close. Yeah, that was a very strong throw by Kyle, but uh, again, Wakus got a huge, huge jump on Phelps. So runner on second base, nobody out. Owen won the count to Brian Bauman. Here's the set by Phelps, checks second base, turns and fires. That's a called strike on the inside part of the plate. Quickly 0-2 now to Brian Bauman on deck is the first baseman, Kiernan Freeman. Wow, nice job right there. Way to come back after the walk of that first batter on Winkus to be able to get in the head here of Bauman. See if this is a waste pitch here. I'm sure it's going to go high. They do go high and actually swinging and fouling it back to the screen was Bauman and the count remains 0-2. Well, the reason why he swung is that was pretty close. That could have been <laughs> called as a letter for strike three. That was a good uh, call right there by Bauman to be able to swing at that because he could have been called out. And Devlin's now going to go out to the mound to talk to Phelps. And going down to the third base side is uh, Bauman talking with uh, Chris Williams. And he'll now head back into that right-hander's batter's box. No balls, two strikes, nobody out, top one. Scoreless, but Frontier with a man on second base. Here is the set by Phelps. Looks to second. Pauses. Pitches. Fouled off to the right side. And the count remains 0-2. Just a small gathering of fans here, Tom. Looking on the right side. Just a dozen or so there. A few more on the Greenfield side. But again, not a great night to take in a ball game. Fortunately, we're here, Bobby. Yeah, we're here. And thankfully, we're inside, too. With the yes. Food they have here as well. So that's been a big help for us as well. The set by Phelps. The 0-2 pitch. Change up and way ahead of it and fouling it off on the left side was Bauman. He was lucky to make contact, Bobby. He was way out in front of that uh, let-up pitch. Yeah, but I got to say, that was a nice opportunity right there for Phelps to try to get that third strike. Bauman just got a hand in. Other than that, that was a good choice of a pitch right there by Owen Phelps. He would love to get the K here. Here's the set by Phelps. And the 0-2 pitch. That is high, ball one, one ball and two strikes. You've got Connor Wakus, he led off with a walk on a 3-2 pitch. He stole second on the very first pitch. Takes a pretty sizable lead. Second baseman Cody's gonna check him there. Now goes back to his position. Here's the set by Phelps. And the pitch, a curveball, hammered foul down the line. Third base side into short left field. Count remains one and two. Well, Bomb has done a nice job really fighting against Phelps here in this at bat. Phelps in, in this batter, he's thrown a fastball several times, a couple of curves, and a, a one changeup. So he's trying everything to get this guy out. Yeah, maybe you shoot low now. One ball, two strikes. Runner on second, nobody out. And now Devlin will call time. He'll go out to the mound. And that's going to draw a response by the Frontier bench. After falling behind quickly, 0-2, a good job there by Bauman falling off some tough pitches and staying alive here. Well, you know, maybe Devlin sees something that we don't. And maybe he's thinking that maybe with him being on top of the plate, maybe we go low and inside and see if we can be able to pinch him. Devlin puts down the sign. Phelps sets. He has a very high set. Turns and fires. One, two, pitch, a curveball right back to the mound. They're going to go to third. And Winkus tries to avoid the tag, cannot do so, he is out. 
They got the exact play they needed, Bobby, other than a strikeout, a ground ball to the left side, and running into the out was Connor Rakes. Ah, nice job right there by Owen Phelps to be able to see that. Cam Baird with the tag over at third base, and third base, and now with that fielder's choice, you still got a runner on first, but you also have one out. So Bauman reaches on the fielder's choice. That play eliminates, that goes a one to five. Quick throw to first base, back diving is Brian Bauman. Kiernan Freeman, the first baseman, left-handed batter, wears number seven, steps in. Runner on first with one out. We are scoreless here in the top of the first inning, just underway here at Vets Field. The set by Phelps, quick throw again, and back easily is Bauman. On deck is the cleanup batter, Jacob Bryant. He has been on fire this year, and what he's been able to do the last couple of years, and this team has been pretty special. He comes up in big moments, too. Here's the set and the pitch, up and away, ball one. One ball, no strikes. Yeah, I'm eager to see Brian hit, because he can hit it hard and he can hit it far. I was lucky enough to be able to coach this guy in Little League, and him and I had a wonderful relationship. And to see him and Hunter Campbell and also Xavier Santiago as former players, pretty cool. That pitch is a little bit high. It was kind of held there for a minute by Kyle Devlin, and uh, the Greenfield bench was asking about that because I just saw Artie Burke look over, and he said, no, nope, it was too high. Yep. Two balls, no strikes, one out here on the top of the first inning. Phelps. Sets at the letters, throws over to first base. That's uh, Hunter Campbell over there. Back easily again is Brian Bauman. Devlin looks over at the Greenfield bench to get the pitch call from Tom Sushnik. Here's the set and the pitch. Curveball inside corner called strike one, one and uh, two and one, I should say. Boy, Jeff, that was a tough pitch. If you were going to try to swing on that one, that would have been brutal because that was a really yeah. perfect pitch. High and in tight, perfect yeah. pitch right there by Phelps. Yeah, would have been a jam shot if the batter swung and made contact. Here's the pitch up and away for a ball. Strong throw by Devlin. Safe. Uh, Got the in there. Yeah, the throw was on time, but they missed the tag. And into second base with the second steal of the game is Brian Bauman. Awesome throw right there by Kyle Devlin. That was a perfect strike right there to second base. Unfortunately, Jared Hart missed the tag on that, and that's why he's sitting at second base right now. Well, you can whiff at the plate, you can whiff on the tag, and that was a whiff right there. Here's the set. The pitch. Swung on a missed. Strike two. Three balls and two strikes now to Freeman. Again, Brian is on deck. So for the second time in this top of the first inning, Frontier with runner in scoring position. And they had Winkus out there on second base with nobody out, but he was retired on a fielder's choice. Here's the pitch. And that's, yep, ball four. And runners now on first and second with one out here in the top first. Well, now you got the big guy up here, Jeff. This kid's been able to get it done all season long. Jacob Ryan. Left fielder, number 23. He is a big young man, very strong. Settles into that right-hander's batter's box. By the way, he's got a real quick swing, too. Very quick. Here's the set by Phelps. Checks the runner on second. Turns and fires. Comes with the curveball in there for a called strike. 0-1. Bryant just kind of nods his head like, okay, I saw it. Yeah, that was a good pitch. Very good pitch by Phelps. So he gets ahead on the batter here. 0-1. Set by Phelps. Turns and fires. Fastball fouled off on the right side. He's quickly up on him. 0-2. So we'll see what the approach by Phelps and Devlin is going to be here. Again, ordinarily, 0-2, they do a waste pitch of some sort. But you got to be careful there. Yeah, absolutely. Right now, if you've got something going in a groove, you've got to start to stay in the groove. Here's the set. The 0-2 pitch. Another curveball followed back to the screen. Count remains 0-2. On deck is the designated hitter, Corbin Blight, and then Matt Hildreth's in the hole. Frontier nothing. Greenfield nothing. One out. Two on for Frontier. You're in the first. Phelps sets. Got a throw down the second base. Hart snuck in behind the runner, but back easily there. 
Bauman. The only problem with doing something like that, Jeff, it could also end up in in left and center field, and that means you have two runners that are even closer in scoring position. Not just one. Set by Phelps. Next pitch. That is just a little bit inside. It's now one and two to Jacob Bryant. It's really sticking with that curveball, John. Here's the set by Phelps. Quick look, turns and rocks on his heels, takes the throw over to second base. Bauman back in there. Bauman's on first. Freeman, uh, rather, Bauman's on second. Freeman's on first. Here with one out in the first. The set. The one two pitch to Bryant. Curveball fouled down towards the Greenfield dugout on the third base side. And the count remains one and two. I'm not keeping a pitch count here, but Phelps has to be getting close to 20 pitches here in the first inning as he's, uh, he's gone full on two of the guys so far. 26 pitches. 20, okay. That's a lot for a half inning and still only one out. Here's the pitch, the one-two curveball down to third base, batted down there. They'll get the out at first, throw to first, got him. Wow, no. what a double play right there. Did they get the double? No, oh, they called, safe. Them safe. called them safe at first, but they did get the runner at third. So Bauman is erased there, but Bryant was able to lug it out. Very close play at first base. Nice play there by the third baseman there to knock it down and get that out at third. So now there's two outs. Here for Frontier at the top of the first inning. And I'll tell you right now, if Baird was able to field that cleanly, would that would have been a double play. Would have been two. Absolutely. But uh, still, was able still to knock it down and be able to get that lead runner. So now they're still being able to stop Frontier from scoring so far. Corbin Blythe, the DH, steps in. Right-handed batter, Phelps, the right-handed pitcher, looks in for the sign from Kyle Devlin. Here's the set. And the first pitch is high with a fastball. It is 1-0. and oh. The last three games that Frontier has played, um, played have been very effective. At least one hit in each one of those three contests. Set by Phelps. The 1-0 pitch. Curveball. Got it. Outside part of the play. Called strike one. One and one. Two outs. Runners on first and second for Frontier. Lots happened here in the first inning, but the Hawks have not scored. No, they've been able to get those defensive plays. Here's the pitch. Ground ball down the shortstop. Jared Hart up with it. Guns over to Hunter Campbell. Got him. And Phelps is able to work out of the jam. We go to the t bottom of the first inning here at GHS. And on the Greenfield Savings Bank scoreboard, it's Frontier nothing. Greenfield coming up on Bear Country 95.3. All right, buddy, we will take it out of Scotty's with the music. Thank you. That was a long half inning. That was. The X-Man getting ready to go here. 29 and first. There's a lot I can say about it. <laughs> Don't keep my mouth shut. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> And back here at Vets Field, Jeff Terrell and Bobby C. And our studio producer is Dave Reno. Great to have you with us tonight for the ball game. As we'll be back with you again tomorrow night for softball from Turner's Falls High School as the Thunder takes on the Mahar Senators. Go through the Greenfield batting order now. It'll be David Carey leading off the center fielder. Owen Phelps, the pitcher, will hit second. Hunter Campbell hits third. He's playing first base tonight. Joel Peabody is the cleanup hitter. He's in left field. Batting fifth is Cam Bear, the third baseman. Jared Hart, the shortstop, is batting sixth. Batting seventh is Kyle Devlin, the catcher. Nate Hazelton is in right field, batting eighth. And Ryan Cody, the second baseman, is batting ninth. Frontier defensively, you got Jacob Bryan in left. Connor Wakeness in center. Zach Renau in right. Matt Hildress at third. Brian Bauman at short. Kyle Barnes is the second baseman. Kiernan Freeman at first. Garrett DeForest is catching, and right-hander Xavier Santiago into his motion. The first pitch, a fastball in there for a called strike one. I've never seen this kid pitch, Bobby. He, he's got, heat, yeah, he's got some heat for sure. Uh, he's had heat ever since he was a little league. The 0-1 pitch to carry. 
Fastball swung through and missed quickly 0-2. Yeah, he doesn't mess around out there. He just lets it fly. Oh, yeah, this kid can pitch, man. And he's got a lot behind his pitch. And I'll tell you, when he's on, he's in the zone. He's tough. The windup and the 0-2 pitch is fouled back over the screen right behind home plate. And count remains 0-2. What I like, too, is that he looks like he's a pretty quick worker. He gets the ball back from the catcher. He's right back on the rubber. He don't like to wait. And I know that uh, his fielders, I'm sure, appreciate that as well. Here's the windup and the 0-2 pitch to Carey. And a breaking pitch in the dirt. They throw it on the first base. Carey is retired. 2-3. to three. And so the strikeout goes into the books. One out here in the Greenfield first inning. And here comes Owen Phelps, the pitcher. Owen's done a nice job this year being able to hit as well as his pitching. He's had a very solid season. He also was an all-Western uh, Mass basketball player, too. He's had a really nice year. His uh, senior year of sports has really been good to him. Here's the windup and the pitch. Oh, oh, Just piece. inside. Man, I, I oh, wish, a pop, dude. wish I mean, we had a gun on him. It's you know, He's bringing some serious heat here. Mm. One ball, no strikes to Phelps. Here's the windup. And the 1-0 pitch, another fastball. That is in there for a strike, one and one. But again, yeah, he gets the ball back. He's immediately right on the rubber. Yeah, and like I said, when he's focused in, he's tough. The 1-1 to Phelps. And that pitch is a little bit high. A little breaking ball there. And now goes to 2-1. and one. On deck for Greenfield is Hunter Campbell, the first baseman. Two balls, one strike. Here's the pitch to Phelps. Ground ball right down the line. First base. It's in the right field for a base hit. Phelps takes the turn at first. And he will run on in and dive head first into second base for a one-out double. That was right down the line of the first base line. Just made it in the inside of that bag, Jeff. It yep. worked out to be a big hit right there for the guy who's trying to be able to do what he can to help his team, not only at the pitcher's mound, but also right there at the plate with a double. Yeah, that was hit so hard, the first baseman, Kiernan Freeman, had no chance to get it as it went just inside the bag. And it's a little tough for him because he's a lefty first baseman, and the way that that ball ended up coming over the bag, it's pretty hard for a lefty to try to get over and get that play, Jeff. Senior first baseman Hunter Campbell now will bat. He's a right-handed batter going up against the right-hander Santiago. Runner on second base for Greenfield with one out here in the first. We are scoreless. Phelps is pitching tonight, so they got him a warm-up jacket. Again, very cool evening here in Greenfield. Here's the set by Santiago, the pitch. A fastball up and away, 1-0. and Well, these two kids had a chance to be able to play on the same team in Little League and win a championship together, Santiago and Campbell. Here's the pitch. Popped up over our heads. Out of play. Count now goes to 1-1. One and one. On deck, the cleanup batter, Joel Peabody, the left fielder, and Cam Baird is in the hole, the third baseman. I'll tell you, if you look at Santiago, if we try to be able to help you guys out, folks, on the radio, he looks a little bit like Bartolo Colon. He's got that same build where he's just a big, muscular guy, and he throws really hard, Jeff. Here's the set by Santiago. Looks at second base, rocks, fires, squaring the bunt, pulling it back. No, Campbell did not pull it back. It's a strike. One and two to Hunter. A big spot right here for Campbell. Got a nice guy sitting at second base waiting to try to get knocked in. Campbell's going to have to do it the hard way. Again, that's going to be facing a guy who's throwing probably in the upper 70s. I mean, he is throwing oh, he, hard. He, he oh, he's yeah, I th yeah, I think he's in the 80s probably. Yeah, he could be in the 80s because it is coming, it is yeah. coming at us. Yeah, man. when he's throwing the number one, I think he's in the... Uh, Possibly the low 80s. That pitch yeah. is fouled off on the right side towards the frontier dugout. And the count remains 1-2. and two. Nice job of staying alive there by Hunter Campbell. Greenfield with a runner on second base with one out here in the bottom of the first inning. We're scoreless. Frontier twice had runners in scoring position, but unable to score. Here's the set and the pitch. Curveball hit into left field. Coming on, making the catch is the left fielder, Jacob Bryant, for the second out. Staying at second base is Owen Phelps. And now two outs, and Joel Peabody, the left fielder, steps in for Greenfield. Well, Joel has uh, had one of those sort of up-and-down uh, seasons at the plate. Uh, this is a time where he's hoping for more of an up as he uh, faces Xavier Santiago. 
And now Coach Williams is going to go out to the mound to talk with Santiago at this point. And obviously the catcher, Garrett DeForest, goes out there as well. Peabody is the left fielder. If he can keep this inning going, Cam Baird, the third baseman, will bat next, number 11. Mm. You know, I was looking at the pitching here. Of, they, they got some solid guys. I mean, you got Matt Hildreth, you got Santiago, uh, you got Dylan Appenall. Yeah. I mean, they, they, Frontier has got some pretty good pitching here. And, oh, they did the automatic walk. Yep. And they're going to throw to Cam Baird. All right, so Cam Baird, there you go. They walked a the guy to get to you. So Cam Baird, the number five batter, the third baseman, right-handed batter, steps in. There are two men out. And runners on first and second. Here's the set, the pitch, in there for a called strike with a fastball 0 and 1. Just hit the knees on that one. Boy, that thing was still a number one pitch right there, Jeff. That came in hard. Santiago gets the sign from DeForest, sets, looks to second, turns, fires, curveball, called strike two. Mm. Quickly ahead of Cam Beard, 0 and 2. Wow, nice mix right there by Xavier. The X-Man, as I call him. Let's see what he goes now. Bluff throw to second base, Phelps back in. Uh, first base is Joel Peabody after he was intentionally walked. Two outs, two on. Here's the pitch. Fouled at the plate. It goes off the batter, so that's a foul ball. So Baird stays alive at 0-2. Earlier in the count, he may have let that one go. But again, 0-2, you got to go. Yep. Well, a good position right here for Xavier Santiago to be in here. Being able to be ahead of the batter with two strikes. And X wants a new baseball. And you got two outs here as well. So two outs and two strikes. No balls, two strikes here on Cam Baird, right-hander. Santiago set to pitch to the right-handed batter, Baird. Long way, he finally does get the sign. Here's the set, the 0-2 pitch. Hit in the air into left field, the line drive that's going to fall for a base hit. Phelps turning third, here comes the third of the plate. He scores, standing up into third base. And now runner on second base, that's an RBI single. And moving up on the throw, Cam Baird, an RBI single. Greenfield leading one to nothing. Ah, nice job right there by Cam Baird. They uh, gave the automatic walk to Peabody. And with that, he was able to get the third base. And Baird, with that throw to home plate, was able to get the second. So now you got an opportunity for two more guys in scoring position for a guy who's hit the ball well for Greenfield and Jared Hart. Jared Hart, the shortstop, now steps in with Kyle Devlin on deck. Greenfield leading one to nothing, but a chance to put up a crooked number right here. Here's the pitch. That is low with a fastball, 1-0. and oh. Hart is a right-handed batter. Where's the number 23? Steps in now. Here's the windup. And the 1-0 -oh pitch. That's outside, 2-0. So it looked like Santiago early on was going to kind of cruise through the Greenfield uh, lineup, but. Well, that big hit by Owen Phelps got things started with that double. The 2 0 pitch, check swing, that's called strike one, two and one. Two outs, runners on second and third. Big spot right here for Jared Hart with two guys in scoring position with two outs here yep. in the bottom of the first. You got Peabody on third and Cam Baird on second base. Here's the pitch. Swung on a miss. Strike two. And the count now even up at two and two. That was a fastball for sure. Uh, let's see which way they go now. Hart moves up a little bit in the box. And the 2-2 pitch called strike three. So Greenfield does get a run, but they leave two runners in scoring position at the end of one here at Vets Field. GCTV's Game of the Week is brought to you in part by Pine Hill Orchards on Greenfield Road in Rain is open seven days a week serving breakfast and lunch in the restaurant and in the store. Their homemade fruit and cream pies, apple cider, and so much more. For event information and what is happening at the farm, go to their website, pinehillorchards.com. Maury and Schmidt, General Contractors, is your local all-service contractor for commercial and residential work. Locally owned by Bob and Robin Provost, their 
their work and reputation speaks for itself. For information and to see their work, go to their website, maurianschmidt.com, or call them at 773-3176. Cruise and Travel, located at Montague Street in Turner's Falls, can help you with your next vacation plans. Let Deb and Mary help you through the process on booking your next vacation. At Cruise and Travel, we go the extra mile so that your miles become the best vacation ever. Call them today at 863-3143. Riffs North Restaurant and Bar, located at 116 Avenue A in Turner's Falls, has the best French fries in the state. Plus, they have 10 Massachusetts gourmet burgers you must try before you die. Local owner Rich Lyman invites you to stop in and try them. For hours and menu information, go online to riffsnorth.com. Dylan Chevrolet on Main Street in Greenfield is your local hometown dealership with the largest selection of Chevy cars and trucks. They also have the best service department in the valley and an auto body shop too. Locally owned by Tom and Jay Dillon, you always get a good deal every day at Dillon Chevrolet. Thanks folks. Greenfield Savings Bank is your local hometown bank. For personal and commercial accounts, stop by a local Greenfield Savings Bank location near you with locations throughout Franklin and Hampshire counties. Online at greenfieldsavings.com. Valley Steel Stamp, located at 15 Greenfield Road in the Industrial Park in Greenfield, is locally owned by Steve Capshaw. They are now hiring. Be a part of something big. For job information, go to vsscnc.com slash careers. Franklin First Federal Credit Union, located at 55 Newton Street in Greenfield. At Franklin First Federal Credit Union, you always get the best loan rates on home and auto, plus the best service from local people who live here in Franklin County. For more information, go to their website, franklinfirst.com. The Northfield Golf Club, located at 31 Holton Street in Northfield, is a beautiful nine-hole golf course, offering a challenging golf experience seven days a week. Locally owned by the Snow family, they also have a beautiful pavilion for weddings, parties, or any occasion. Contact Shelby for more information at Shelby at NorthfieldGolfCourse.com. Manny's Appliance, 51 River Street in Greenfield, has the best selection of appliances in the area, with local salespeople who care about you, the customer, with better prices than the big box store. Come in to see their huge selection at 51 River Street in Greenfield. Fitzgerald Real Estate, located at 116 Federal Street in Greenfield. Green Fitzgerald knows all about Franklin County and the local market. Let her professional team at Fitzgerald Real Estate help you through the process of buying or selling your home. For information online at FitzgeraldRealEstate.com or call 774-6317. Your local Dunkin' Donuts, locally owned by the Mata family with three Greenfield locations, including two drive through locations on Federal Street and also on the Mohawk Trail. In Greenfield, America runs on Dunkin'. All right, Frontier now batting here in the top half of the second inning, and they're going to have Matt Hildreth, the third baseman, leading off against Owen Phelps. And here's the pitch, a curveball in there for a called strike one. He's had very good control of the number two so far. He really has, but that's the one that's been working for him, and that's the one that Schusnick said has been effective for him over the last three starts. No balls, one strike to Matt Hildreth. Here's the pitch, fastball up and away, and it goes to one and one. So it'll be Matt Hildreth, Garrett DeForest, and Carl Barnes batting here in the second inning. Greenfield leading by a score of one to nothing on an RBI single by Cam Baird. And Phelps now steps off the rubber. They're gonna go through the signs again. Hildreth is a right-handed batter. Where's the number nine? He, he stands pretty close to the plate as well. The windup and the one-one pitch, and he bounced that one right in front of the plate. Count goes to two and one. The game time temperature was 48 degrees under cloudy skies. It's dropped to 47 here at Vets Field. And depending on how late this game goes, we might be in the 30s before we're done. Thought we were done with that, by the way. Yeah. Here on the ground, deep in the short, pick it up as Hart. Strong throw, nice stretch by Campbell. Got him by a step, because Hildreth can run. One out. Wow, nice play right there by Hart, but look at the stretch there by Hunter Campbell. That was fantastic over there, first bag, to be able to scoop that out. So they get the leadoff batter here in the frontier second inning, and now stepping in is the catcher, Garrett DeForest. He's another guy that is really, really fast. We and saw he's that. also been hitting the ball really well, too, Jeff. He wears his uh, uniform pants, uh, pants and socks old style. There's a line drive down towards first base and one step to his right, Hunter Campbell backhands it down there very quickly, two outs here. So a very long top of the first inning, but a pretty quick so far top of the second. 
nice job right there. Very effective pitching here by Owen Phelps and a couple of nice plays that were made, especially the scoop out of the dirt on that first out. And then, of course, the catch there by Hunter. That was pretty much right there for him. Kyle Barnes, the second baseman, steps in on the left side. He takes a called strike, 0-1. So a much stronger inning this time by Owen Phelps. Seems like he's pitching more to contact, letting his defense do some work. Here's the windup. And the 0 1 pitch. Line drive right back to Phelps off his glove down towards second base. Quick throw, safe. That's an infield single. Yeah, and yeah. Phelps just couldn't quite glove it. it. Ended up going out towards second base, and Cody couldn't quite make the play in time. Well, a little bit of tough there off the deflection. Yep. But a uh, nice job right there by Phelps. It was more self defense for himself than it was anything else. But uh, gave it a shot and almost had it. Two out single. For Frontier, Kyle Barnes, uh, Garrett DeForest, rather. Here's the set. And the pitch. There's a ground ball down the shortstop. Over that is Hart. Strong throw to first. Got him by a step. And the inning is over. So a two-out single goes by the wayside. We go to the last half of the second inning here at Vets Field. And on the Greenfield Savings Bank scoreboard, it is Greenfield 1. Frontier Nothing on Bear Country 95.3. All right, homeboy. That wasn't many pitches. No hot pitches? No, he is. He's counting pitches. More than that. He's at 30. Oh, no, no, right. not that Let's many. see. Oh, we'll oh, take oh, it out of our charter NEX. Yeah, he's at, he's 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 at, he's he's one of them don't work. Oh, okay. Nine, 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 don't give me those old ones. Oh, all right. Well, we've got to get this together for next week. We'll get our little bag set up. We need a little bag, all right? We get a little bag, we'll be good. If I get two lavaliers, I'll and be tonight's good. game okay, is right being brought to you here Park on Bear Park. Country 95.3 by Greenfield Savings Bank, by Hubie's Tavern and Restaurant, and by Albert B. Allen Insurance. Nice hitting there, Bobby, by uh, Mr. Phelps. Yeah, really good job. And good defense, too. Nice job right there at the shortstop position for Jared Hart. He made a couple of really nice plays, a couple of nice stretches there. Hunter Campbell's got a great stretch to best definitely be able to help out his other infielders. That's a good help if you can have a first baseman that can do a split. I know that one thing I wasn't very good at was that. I might have been Boomer back in the day, and I always, you know, held the ball well, Jeff, but no splitting like that. Man, that's bottom, pretty good. Bottom third of the lineup for Greenfield, Kyle Devlin leading off for Greenfield, takes a cold strike with the fastball, 0-1. It'll be Devlin, Nate Hazelton, and Ryan Cody. 7-8-9 here in the second inning. Greenfield leading by a score of one to nothing. And Santiago back out there looking at the force. They're going through the sign. Now he'll step off. Not sure what's happening here. I think they had a little miscommunication there. He's trying to show the X-Man exactly what he was looking for. And now he's got it. Santiago into his motion. And the 0-1 pitch curveball called strike two. So Devlin in an early hole 0-2. Uh, one thing that Coach Husnick was saying that he's hoping for is some extra support from the bottom of his batting order. So I think he's he going to need that today. The 0-2 pitch to Devlin, and he swings through and fouls it off on the right side. Good job at hanging tough there. That pitch was nearly by him, but he was able to make contact and keep the count at 0-2. He's really improved his baseball game in his career. He's really come a long way. Very impressed with the way that Kyle's been able to develop as a baseball player. And the 0-2 pitch, again, fouled off. He's hanging tough, tough pitches, and the count remains 0-2. On deck is Nate Hazelton, the right fielder, and then we'll see the freshman second baseman, Ryan Cody. You know, they got a lot of young kids on this team that can still play. I mean, you look at this Greenfield team, there's still some really good young players, too. Here's the pitch. The 0-2 pitch is up and in, and the count now goes to 1-2. and two. Devlin, a right-handed batter. He is the Greenfield catcher. He also pitches. Here's the 1-2. Curveball fouled back. Powell was a little bit ahead of that one, but again, was able to make contact. Well, he's doing a nice job in there. Really fighting it off against San Diego here. The X-Man's still delivering, though. He's still throwing hard. One ball, two strikes. Here's the pitch. Fastball fouled away again on the right side. And Santiago's thinking, how, what kind of pitch do I go here to put this guy away? Wow, I'll tell you right now, if I got a dollar for every foul ball so far in the first couple innings, I'd be looking pretty good right now, wouldn't I? 
<laughs> Working on the old retirement fund, Jeff. <laughs> One ball, two strikes on Devlin. Leading off here in the Greenfield second. The Wave leading one to nothing. Here's the one-two pitch. And that is pot foul on the right side over towards the frontier dugout. The forest goes into a dive, a sliding dive right into the dugout, unable to catch it. And the count remains one and two. Man, that kid flew out of that box. What speed the forest had coming out of that box. Yeah, he is a Man. really, really, I mean, I watched him play uh, football the last several years and- oh, He came flying out of that box. He's very fast. One ball, two strikes to Kyle Devlin. Here's the pitch, up and in, two and two. What a battle. Sonny Arnold, I think he thought that he would would have been done with Mr. Devlin by now, not the case. Two balls, two strikes to Kyle, the windup, and the pitch. Fouled away on the right side. Again, he just took a little something off that. Devlin was out ahead of it, but was able to make contact. Wow, Devlin really hanging tough here in this bat. What a great at bat for number four. Hazelton on deck, and then Ryan Cody here in the Greenfield second. The 2-2 pitch, hammered into center field. Lining it up out there, Connor Wink just puts it away in medium center field. Devlin finally retired, but a good at bat for Kyle. There's one down. Yeah, that's that's a good battle right there by Kyle. Did everything he could. I mean, even the guys are all like, hey, you did what you could, brother. <laughs> it's called hanging tough, man. Followed off several pitches, laid off some tough pitches. And he's finally retired. And a fly out to center field. Nick Hazelton, the right fielder, steps in on the right side. One out here on the greenfield second. One nothing wave. Santiago, fastball inside, nearly gut Nate. But Nate's got enough muscle there where if you hit him, it's probably not going to hurt him. I mean, this, yeah. kid, this kid is, he is solid. Yeah, getting ready to go into the service. So uh, he's got a new venture on his, on, on his plate. The pitch is bounced in front of the plate on a curveball. One and one. Or two and oh, I should say, sorry. Yeah, Hazelton, of course, he's the younger, uh, he's the older brother, rather, of Katie Hazelton, outstanding uh, athlete here at Greenfield High School. You know. Field hockey and uh, basketball. Her basketball talent is just incredible. And what she's been able to do and be able to play in the, you know, the Pan Am games and all these different tournaments and all these big tournaments that she's been able to play in and travel teams, she is truly a wonderful basketball player to come out of GHS. You know, she is on track. <laughs> she is on track to reach 1,000 points next winter during her junior season. That's very rare. Line drive down towards second base and bobbled there briefly. Hazelton's going to beat it out. Oh, nice hustle by Hazelton. He flew down that line. Barnes bobbled it just a little bit, just enough for Hazelton to reach. So he's on first base with one out here. So that's going to be an error on the second baseman, Kyle Barnes. If he fields it cleanly, still probably would have been a close play because Hazelton's got good foot speed, but if he played it cleanly and a good throw, would have got him. Well, big spot right here for the young man, Ryan Cody. Here's the set and the first pitch to the freshman second baseman up and in, ball one. Cody. He's a second baseman, he's a right-handed batter, he's a freshman, and he's my neighbor. Yes. He's right down the street. Yes, he is. Been watching him uh, play uh, various sports out in the streets for years now. Oh, yeah. Here's the pitch, hammer down the line, left field, foul by about five feet. And the count goes to one and one. And I think his father is right below the booth. I thought I just heard his voice. Oh, yeah. That would be Scott Cody. Well, the one thing we can say is, is the X-Man's definitely uh, throwing hard, but this Green Wave team, these guys have been able to get their bats out. They have. Against a guy who's definitely one of the hardest throwing guys that I've seen so far in some baseball games I've caught this season. One ball, one strike to Ryan Cody. Hazelton takes his lead at first. One out here, here's the pitch. And that is low, two and one. Well, the breaking ball is not working as well for the X-Man as it is for his fastball. And on the other side, Owen Phelps, his fastball has been just okay. His curveball has been stellar so far tonight. And uh, Santiago just kind of throws a little lollipop check-in throw to first base. Hazelton back easily. Nate now will take his lead. One out here in the second. Greenfield leading one to nothing. Here's the pitch to Cody. That is inside for a ball. Runners going. And 
easy out recorded there. Hazleton gunned down by DeForest, and now there are two outs. That wasn't even close. Did you see that laser by DeForest to second base? That was incredible, Jeff. Had him by wow. Uh, had him by uh, seven or eight feet. Wow, not, that was incredible, man. Not close. Nice what a throw shoot. there by DeForest. And now the next pitch, and swung on a miss for strike two. I'd rather uh, get strike two here to Cody. Three balls, two strikes. Santiago back on the bump into his motion. And here's the pitch that is outside, ball four. So Cody now will jog down the first base. We're back to the top of the order. David Carey up now. Well, that was a gamble right there by the Greenfield coaching staff to go and steal Hazleton where he was thrown out, where that walk could have been runners on first and second <coughs> and only one out. Instead, you got two outs with only a runner on first. Jerry struck out his first time up. Here's the set by Santiago, turns and fires. That's a pitch in there for a called strike one. 0-1, two outs, one on for Greenfield here in the last of the second inning. Seven inning ball game here. They lead one to nothing. We'd like to add on here. Set by Santiago, that pitch is high. And the count now goes to one and one. If Carey can keep it going, Owen Phelps, the pitcher, will bat next. Big first inning for him with that leadoff hit with a uh, double. Later scored. And that's it, and he's got the big filled in spot. One one pitch is popped up, foul behind the plate, DeForest running over, it's gonna be close, and he makes the catch as it was coming back onto the field of play. That was a nice inning by the catcher, Garrett DeForest. So Greenfield's down in the second, we go to the third. GCTV's Game of the Week is brought to you in part by Pine Hill Orchards on Greenfield Road in Coleraine is open seven days a week serving breakfast and lunch in the restaurant and in the store their homemade fruit and cream pies, apple cider and so much more. For event information and what is happening at the farm go to their website pinehillorchards.com Maury and Schmidt General Contractors is your local all service contractor for commercial and residential work. Locally owned by Bob and Robin Provost their work and reputation speaks for itself. For information and to see their work, go to their website, maurianschmidt.com, or call them at 773-3176. Cruise and travel located at Montague Street in Turner's Falls can help you with your next vacation plans. Let Deb and Mary help you through the process on booking your next vacation. At Cruise and Travel, we go the extra mile so that your miles become the best vacation ever. Call them today at 863-3143. Riffs North Restaurant and Bar located at 116 Avenue A in Turner's Falls has the best french fries in the state plus they have 10 massachusetts gourmet burgers you must try before you die local owner rich lyman invites you to stop in and try them for hours and menu information go online to riffsnorth.com dylan chevrolet on main street in greenfield is your local hometown dealership with the largest selection of chevy cars and trucks they also have the best service department in the valley and an auto body shop too locally owned by tom and jay dylan you always get a good deal every day at dylan chevrolet thanks folks greenfield savings bank is your local hometown bank Bank. For personal and commercial accounts, stop by a local Greenfield Savings Bank location near you with locations throughout Franklin and Hampshire counties online at greenfieldsavings.com. Valley Steel Stamp, located at 15 Greenfield Road in the Industrial Park in Greenfield, is locally owned by Steve Capshaw. They are now hiring. Be a part of something big. For job information, go to vsscnc.com slash careers. Franklin First Federal Credit Union, located at 55 Newton Street in Greenfield at Franklin First Federal Credit Union, you always get the best loan rates on home and auto, plus the best service from local people who live here in Franklin County. For more information, go to their website, franklinfirst.com. The Northfield Golf Club, located at 31 Holton Street in Northfield, is a beautiful nine-hole golf course offering a challenging golf experience seven days a week. Locally owned by the Snow family, they also have a beautiful pavilion for weddings, parties, or any occasion. Contact Shelby for more information at shelby at northfieldgolfcourse.com. Manny's Appliance, 51 
River Street in Greenfield has the best selection of appliances in the area with local salespeople who care about you, the customer, with better prices than the big box store. Come in to see their huge selection at 51 River Street in Greenfield. Fitzgerald Real Estate located at 116 Federal Street in Greenfield. Green Fitzgerald knows all about Franklin County and the local market. Let her professional team at Fitzgerald Real Estate help you through the process of buying or selling your home. For information online at FitzgeraldRealEstate.com or call 774-6317. Your local Dunkin' Donuts, locally owned by the Mata family with three Greenfield locations, including two drive through locations on Federal Street and also on the Mohawk Trail. In Greenfield, America runs on Dunkin'. We'll be at Turner's Falls High School. We'll see Mully's girls again as Turner's Falls will be hosting the Mahar Senators in softball. Turner's Falls now just uh, waiting for the postseason, but you know they're not going to let up on the uh, the accelerator body. They, they, <laughs> no. they don't do that. No. Matter <laughs> of fact, it's funny because we were just doing our uh, my TV show today, and I was talking about the fact that it's a program and it just keeps just going and going. Yeah. It's a machine, you know. And mm -hmm. if the machine's well oiled, it just keeps running, right, Jeff? <clears throat> Absolutely. Connor Wakus, lead off batter, batter here in the third inning. Greenfield leading one nothing. Owen Phelps sits. And a line drive in the left center field, that is a base hit. So a leadoff single on the first pitch by Connor Wakefist. Not that hard hit. It was kind of in on his hands a little bit, but he was able to muscle it out in the left center field. Well, that was the point right there, is the fact that he was just able to be able to follow all the way through with the way he swung and was just enough on it so that he was able to get it in there. And a little looper, but hey, a base hit's a base hit. So runner on first base, the tying run <coughs> here in the third inning for Frontier. And at the dish is Brian Baum in the shortstop with that glowing orange bat. Quick check throw on first base, but Wake gets back easily. Kiernan Freeman is on deck. Well, back in that first inning, Jeff, um, Wake was able to walk, and then he stole second base. But then was... Uh, was uh, the pitch called strike, and it's 0-1. And, and he ended up getting, uh, got, himself, got himself in a little bit of a situation where he went to third on a hit and yep. ended up getting caught. And quick timeout called there now by Brian Bauman at, uh, at the dish. Wake us on first. Nobody out here. Frontier third inning, top three here. They're the visiting team, obviously. They trail 1-0. Here's the set by Owen Phelps. Quick throw to first base, and back in is Connor Wakus. Greenfield has Peabody in left, Carey in center, Hazelton in right, Baird, Hart, Cody, Campbell. That's the infield third to first. Kyle Devlin catching for Owen Phelps. Here's the pitch. Ground ball right back to the mound. Phelps, quick throw to first base. Got him there. Down to second base is Connor Wakus. So he's in scoring position with one out. Ah, uh, nice job right there by Bauman. It looked like there was a hit and run that was going on in that one. And it was effective because it did get Wakus over to second base. But unfortunately, Bauman is out with the play from Owen Phelps. So a little small ball here by the Red Hawks to get a runner in scoring position. But now the heart of the order coming up. They got Kiernan Freeman, Jacob Bryan, and Corbin Blight batting here. Freeman, the first baseman, left-handed batter, check swing. He went through it, and that's a strike. And he kind of looked over it and already broke real quick, saying, I thought I held up. May have been even, even a called strike, actually. Honestly, it looked like a strike to me. Yeah. 0-1. Runner on second with one out here in the third. Here's the pitch from Phelps. Curveball, a little bit high on that one. Didn't quite have enough bite on that one. And the count goes to 1-1. One and one. Curveball has been very effective for Owen over the last four games. Matter of fact, a couple of shutouts, one against Belchertown and one against Hampshire Regional already this year. Wakus will dive back, will uh, jump back to second base as Jared Hart tried to sneak behind the runner and they try to pick off play. Almost never works, but if you can keep him, you can keep his lead, you know, maybe five feet shorter than usual, that could help you on a play at the plate. Absolutely. Set by Phelps, here's the pitch. Hit hard down the line in right field. That's a base head. Wakus makes the turn at third. He will score easily. And on in the second base, making the turn, going to third. Here comes the throw down the third base, diving in with a triple. 
Huge hit right there. Kiernan Freeman with an RBI triple, scoring Connor Wakus from second base, and this game is tied at one. Boy, that was a nice pull hit right there by the lefty, and he just got it inside the white line, and it was a nice hit, and it went deep too. That thing was rolling. And the Hawks with a runner on third base here with only one out, so the go-ahead run in scoring position 90 feet away for Jacob Bryant. Here's the set by Phelps. Looks towards third, turns and fires. Curveball, that's a ball, one and oh. On deck is Corbin Blight, the DH. Good job right there by Jacob to be able to lay off that curveball. It's a nice pitch too by Phelps. Phelps sets, timeout called at the plate by the uh, batter, Jacob Bryant. Greenfield scored one run in the first inning. And Frontier with the equalizer here in the third. Seven inning ball game here. We are tied at one. Here's the set by Phelps. And the pitch, another curveball. That one is high. So he has not been able to spin it just enough. The last two or three times he's thrown the deuce, it has not hit the strike zone. See where he goes here. 2 0 pitch. Up and away. 3 and 0 the count now. Trying to be a little careful here with Bryant. Yep. It's Notice that. Move. No, I think uh, what you do is if you get yourself in a situation where you're that far deep behind, you might as well just put the guy at first. Set by Phelps. The 3 0 pitch. That's in there for a called strike. Three and one. No, well, Owen not ready to give in to this guy just yet. Three balls, one strike. Runner on third with one out. Game is tied at one. Here's the pitch. Another curveball inside. Runners now on first and third with one out. And that'll bring up the DH, Corbin Blight. Well, like I said, the last three games, Blight has been able to at least get a single in each one of those three games for Frontier. <coughs> and he's hoping for another one here today, especially with a guy sitting in scoring position at third base. Well, we'll see what Skinny Williams does here with his runners. Specifically the runner on first if he tries to get the Greenfield defense moving around here. A lot of coaches are very aggressive in that way. Here's the first pitch to Corbin Blight. That pitch is just missing 1-0. Well, if you're Phelps, what you want to do right now is you want to try to be able to get ahead of these hitters. You don't want to be behind, and unfortunately the last couple of guys, he's been behind in the count. Here's the set. 1-0 pitch to Blight. That's in there for a called strike, one and one. And now uh, Jacob Bryan ditches his batting gloves. He takes his lead at first. Over on third base, Kiernan Freeman, who tied the game with that triple, throw over the first base, back easily, Jacob Bryant. Just trying to keep him honest at first base. Here's the set, and the pitch, runner's going, ground ball down the shortstop, Hart up with it, he'll throw to first base, they get the out there, the run scores, quick for the third, and the ball gets away, and getting up Jacob Bryan, he's going to try to score the throw down to Kyle Devlin, puts the tag on, got him! Oh, what a play right there! It ends up being a double play. And you've got players jawing from both sides, but specifically the Frontier kids. So a crazy double play, but the run did score from third base on that infield out. And Frontier has taken the lead two to one. We go to the last half of the third inning here at Vets Field. Greenfield Savings Bank scoreboard. It's Frontier two, Greenfield one on Bear Country 95.3. What, what, what were they hole? getting with um, I don't know, Freeman? I thought he was going to get the heave hole. Yeah. yeah. What, what ended up happening? What happened? Yeah, I don't know what happened. I, I didn't see. I didn't see what happened after that thing. So, so what happened was, uh, I think Brian was trying to take out Devin. Oh. On slide. That's okay. that's a total Brian thing to do. But okay. I think Devin took it personally. Yeah. Oh. And then got up, started beef, and then Kiernan was just supporting. Gotcha. Him. Gotcha. Oh, okay. 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 Thank I, you. I don't think Kiernan had any. I couldn't tell, but yeah. he was good. <laughs> so 
And we want to thank more of the sponsors here on the broadcast tonight here on Bear Country 95.3. They include the Greenfield Police Association, Alex Cyano CPA, and electrician Neil A. Zelinsky. So Frontier has scored two runs here in the top half of the third inning to take a 2-1 lead over Greenfield. But Greenfield got two outs on that play, kind of a disjointed double play. They got the infield out at first base and then the runner tried to score after the throw that got away down at third base. Nice play there by Baird to pick it up and got it down to Devlin who applied the tag. And then again a little bit of jawing going on from both sides at the end of that inning but we're settling in. We're back to playing some baseball here. <laughs> well I think what happened is you just had a guy that was coming into the plate a little bit aggressively and the catcher thought that it was a little too aggressive and just sort of stood his ground. And that's exactly how that seemed to have ended right there. And nice job right there by the umpire, uh, Artie Burke, to be able to handle things. And also Coach Skinny and him had a chance to chat after the inning. Everything's all set. All right, so we are uh, at Greenfield batting here in the last half of the third inning again. We play seven inning ball games here at the high school level. And it'll be Owen Phelps the pitcher leading off for Greenfield. Nice job right here by Owen Phelps uh, with a nice double back in the first inning. And he also is that scored run that Greenfield has for their one run here today. And Santiago deals that's inside and low, ball one. Owen Phelps, a right-handed batter. Santiago into his motion, here's the pitch. That's in there for a called strike. Fastball, one and one. Big gap there between center and right field, Jeff. If Even if Phelps can even get a little bit on it, it's wide open. Curveball, there's a line drive down to the second baseman, Barnes. Catches it right at his ankle tops. And one out here on the Greenfield third. Well, he had the right idea where he wanted to go with it, yeah. though. I, I totally <laughs> feel that was, that was a good move, though. I mean, it was a good gap for him to be able to get it if he could. Just didn't, didn't get it out of the infield. Hunter Campbell, the Greenfield first baseman, number six, steps in on the right side. One out here, last half of the third, Frontier two, Greenfield one. Here's the pitch. That's a curveball, low and away. One and oh. On Hunt deck is Joel Peabody, the left fielder. Hunter Campbell and Joel Peabody are a couple of guys who have been able to hit the ball really well. And uh, so that's a big sign for them. Line drive in the left center field. It gets past the center fielder. It's going to roll. Close to the wall, Hunter Campbell's going to take the turn at second base. He's going to head on to third base. Relay throw in. He's safe. Wow, what a play by Hunter Campbell to get that underneath and to be able to get that hand on the back side of the base. Huge triple right there by Hunter Campbell. The throw was there, and he somehow got around the tag. The frontier, third baseman, shortstop, and the pitcher, they're all questioning that call by the base umpire, the center fielder, Connor Winkus, went into a dive to try to get that, and it rolled all the way to the 375 mark in left center field. So a one-out triple by Hunter Campbell. Greenfield with the tying run, 90 feet away for Joel Peabody. Well, what a great throw from the outfield, though, to third base. That was a glazer. Nice job right there by Frontier. They almost had Campbell. And the hit itself was a laser, too. I mean, Hunter was right on that fastball. All right, here we go. Joel Peabody, the cleanup batter, steps in on the right side. Infield is in. Here's the pitch. And that's a ball, 1-0. One, oh. one out, bottom three, Frontier two, Greenfield one. We got a good ball game going here, folks. Here's the set by Santiago, the pitch, got him! Hit by the pitch, and down the first base will be Joel Peabody, runners on first and third with one out. Peabody's got some speed, he's got some speed. So now you got a guy on first base with some speed, you got a guy who ended up coming up with a huge base hit in that first inning with Cam Baird, picked up that RBI as well. And just out there now settling down, Santiago is Coach Skinny Williams. Yep, Skinny's going to go out there and talk uh, not only with his pitcher and catcher, but the entire infield. They got the lead this last half inning, and all he wants is guys to kind of settle in. Santiago has been hit not hard through the entire night, but there's been uh, certain batters that have been right on it. That, that hit by Hunter Campbell was easily the hardest hit of the night by a Greenfield batter. 
Yeah, that was a great job, too, in center field. I know that, you know, Wakis was giving everything he could out there to try to get that ball, but that thing was a laser coming off the bat of Hunter Campbell. All right, conference on the mound is over. And for Greenfield, we've got Cam Baird, the third baseman, up. And he brought in the, uh, the lone Greenfield run so far. Well, now he's got an opportunity for another RBI with Campbell sitting on third base. And on first base is Joel Peabody. First and third with one out. Here's the pitch. It's a bunt back towards the mound. Santiago slides, picks it up, throws the first base. It's wide. The run scores. We're tied now, rounding third. And Peabody. He gets, he yeah, has to go gonna, back to third. He's going to go back to third. Yeah. Yeah. Nice bunt right there by Cam Baird. Ball ended up going out of play, so they awarded him two bases. And the game now is tied at two. And now, Jared Hart will step in. Ah, good hitter right here for Greenfield. Looks like they're going to make a pitch and change. That will do it for Santiago. And let's see who they are going to go with. Was that a fresh Santiago gets a nice hand from the crowd here, but he was starting to get hit a little bit here, Bobby. Yeah, and Greenfield really did a nice job on a little small ball right there, being able to go with that bunt. That bunt was a great, that was a good spot for that bunt right there too. And it worked, it was effective, and now, unfortunately, the X-Man, Xavier Santiago, has been taken out of this game. And Gabe Gachinski. We'll replace him on the mound for Frontier. Right hander. He's not, another one who's can pitch pretty well, Jeff. Yeah, not nearly the size of Santiago. He's more of a more of a slender athlete. Good basketball player in the winter for Ben Barshevsky. And he's a right-handed pitcher, wears the number 13, but he's uh he's got a little something on the ball here. Again, not doesn't throw quite as hard as Santiago. Well, a big spot here for Jared Hart, who's made some really nice plays defensively at shortstop. Right now, you could come in with a nice big hit here and knock in two RBIs. Greenfield could be in some good position right now, early in this game, here in the bottom of the third. So this is a big spot right here for Jared Hart. Game is tied at two. Runners on second and third with one out here. After that wide throw. Cam Baird, he showed up to play today, too. Made oh, that yeah. nice play from third base over to home to get Jacob Bryant. He's got a couple of hits and a couple of RBIs. Joel Peabody's on second base. Cam Baird, uh, rather, Joel Peabody's on third. Cam Baird at second for Jared Hart. Here's the first pitch to Jared. That's a ball low and away. 1-0. and oh. On deck is the catcher, Kyle Devlin. Hard a right-handed batter. Here's the pitch from Gachinski. Bounces it in front of the plate. Count goes to two and zero. Oh. Well, if I'm hard, I'm gonna look for look for the opportunity here, because you know Gachinski's got to deal something at least to get one strike to get himself in a groove. So here's where Hard has a chance to be able to get on the ball. Two balls, no strikes. Here's the pitch. Fouled away on the right side. Yeah, he liked that one. Yeah, that was a good opportunity, too. Just couldn't do anything with it. Fouled it away, and the count now goes to 2-1. and one. There's one out here in the third. Greenfield and Frontier tied at two. This is a huge game for Greenfield. They're battling for their postseason life right now. Here's the pitch. Up and away. Count goes to 3-1. and one. <coughs> Well, there's only one spot left. That's it. Whether they give that to Jared Hart or not, we're going to find out right now. Set by Gachinski. And the 3-1 pitch. In there for a called strike with a fastball. Three and two. Well, he gets that again. He's got to take it. Gachinski working quickly into his set. Payoff pitch. Hit on the line in the center field. And making the catch, tagging at third. And wisely going back is Joel Peabody. A nice throw in from center field. Nice play there by Connor Witkus. Yeah, he's and got a laser, now, man. And now there are two outs here in the Greenfield third inning. Nice laser right there from the center fielder, Connor Witkus, to get it to DeForest. Now Devlin in a good position. And that fast, on that first at bat, man, him and 
Xavier Santiago went at it for a while. <laughs> they did. <laughs> a lot of foul balls off the bat of Kyle Devlin before he uh, flat out to center field. First pitch is high to Kyle, and the count goes to 1-0. On deck for Greenfield, Nate Hazelton, the right fielder, if uh, Devlin can reach. Here's the set. 1-0 pitch. And that's a bunt popped, and DeForest goes into a full-length dive. Couldn't quite come up with it. And the count goes to 1-1 one and one now. Devlin tried to put that down and popped it up. Looks like his uh, hand got underneath. He jammed his hand a little bit there on that one, but he's going to be all right. And Devlin goes two-thirds of the way back towards the Greenfield dugout. Not oh. sure what happened there, if uh, Coach Sushnik had to say there. Well, I tell you right now, that was an ugly-looking bunt. One ball, one strike. Two outs here in the third. Greenfield and Frontier tied at two. Devlin pops it up on the right side. Foul territory to Forrest back towards the screen, and he makes the catch to retire the side. But Greenfield... Ties the game, but they leave two in scoring position. We go to the fourth, and on the Greenfield Savings Bank scoreboard, Frontier 2, Greenfield 2. On GCTV's Game of the Week is brought to you in part by Pine Hill Orchards. On Greenfield Road in Rain is open seven days a week, serving breakfast and lunch in the restaurant. And in the store, there are homemade fruit and cream pies, apple cider, and so much more. For event information and what is happening at the farm, go to their website, pinehillorchards.com. Maury and Schmidt, General Contractors, is your local all-service contractor for commercial and residential work. Locally owned by Bob and Robin Provost, their work and reputation speaks for itself. For information and to see their work, go to their website, maurianschmidt.com, or call them at 773-3176. Cruise and travel located at Montague Street in Turner's Falls can help you with your next vacation plans. Let Deb and Mary help you through the process on booking your next vacation. At Cruise and Travel, we go the extra mile so that your miles become the best vacation ever. Call them today at 863-3143. Riffs North Restaurant and Bar located at 116 Avenue A in Turner's Falls Falls has the best French fries in the state. Plus, they have 10 Massachusetts gourmet burgers you must try before you die. Local owner Rich Lyman invites you to stop in and try them. For hours and menu information, go online to riffsnorth.com. Dylan Chevrolet on Main Street in Greenfield is your local hometown dealership with the largest selection of Chevy cars and trucks. They also have the best service department in the valley and an auto body shop too. Locally owned by Tom and Jay Dillon, you always get a good deal every day at Dylan Chevrolet. Thanks folks. Greenfield Savings Bank is your local hometown bank for personal and commercial accounts stop by a local greenfield savings bank location near you with locations throughout franklin and hampshire counties online at greenfieldsavings.com valley steel stamp located at 15 greenfield road in the industrial park in greenfield is locally owned by steve capshaw they are now hiring be a part of something big for job information go to vsscnc.com slash careers franklin first federal credit union located at 55 newton street in greenfield at Franklin First Federal Credit Union, you always get the best loan rates on home and auto, plus the best service from local people who live here in Franklin County. For more information, go to their website, franklinfirst.com. The Northfield Golf Club, located at 31 Holton Street in Northfield, is a beautiful nine-hole golf course, offering a challenging golf experience seven days a week. Locally owned by the Snow family, they also have a beautiful pavilion for weddings, parties, or any occasion. Contact Shelby for more information at shelby at northfieldgolfcourse.com. Manny Supply. 51 River Street in Greenfield has the best selection of appliances in the area with local salespeople who care about you, the customer, with better prices than the big box store. Come in to see their huge selection at 51 River Street in Greenfield. Fitzgerald Real Estate located at 116 Federal Street in Greenfield. Green Fitzgerald knows all about Franklin County and the local market. Let her professional team at Fitzgerald Real Estate help you through the process of buying or selling your home. For information online at Fitzgerald Real Estate com or call 774-6317. Your local Dunkin' Donuts, locally owned by the Mata family with three Greenfield locations, including two drive through locations on Federal Street and also on the Mohawk Trail. In Greenfield, America runs on Dunkin'. And for Frontier, leading off will be Matt Hildreth, the right fielder, or the third baseman rather, right-handed batter. And the windup by Owen Phelps on the first pitch. That's a curveball high. Owen's had trouble controlling his curve the last two innings. 
And you see he was really doing a great job. He had a string in the first two innings. The windup in the 1-0 pitch. And that is low 2 and all. Well, now you got to get yourself back in the groove here. Whether you got to throw yourself a fastball or not. Two and all. Two and all. I got the count now. Two balls, no strikes. It's two and all. Phelps into his motion. Here's the pitch. There's a ground ball wide of third foul. And the count now goes to two and one. The frontier, you've got Hildreth, Garrett DeForest is on deck, Kyle Barnes will hit third this inning, and if anyone reaches, we'll see the number nine hitter, Zach Ranoff. Like I said, he does so much better when he's sitting ahead of batters. Two balls, one strike to Hildreth. Phelps gets the sign into his motion. The pitch, curveball. Into right field, that's going to drop for a base hit. Going the other way, Matt Hildreth and a leadoff single for the Red Hawks, and they're in business here in the fourth. Wow, nice job right there by Hildreth to be able to get on that one. Garrett DeForest ended up a little line drive shot over to Hunter Campbell. A late swing that he ended up having cost him an out back in that second inning. Garrett DeForest is a very rare baseball player these days on any level in that he wears the old style stirrups. No one wears those anymore, but he does. Here's the first pitch in, fouled off behind the frontier dugout out of play. It's 0-1. Runner on first base, nobody out here in the fourth. Greenfield and Frontier tied it to a very tight game. It was a tight game the first time they played back in April. Frontier winning that one in South Deerfield, 3-2. Greenfield at seven and five. They're on the tournament bubble. They need this ball game here tonight. Here's the set. The 0-1 pitch, runner going. Ground ball wide of third. And the count now to DeForest is 0-2. On deck is Kyle Barnes, the second baseman. One thing I gotta say is both coaches have been very aggressive on the base pass here. If you notice that here tonight, Jeff. A lot of uh, steals and a lot of hit and runs. Yep, they like to get the infielders uh, moving around. It can sometimes really help out the batter. Here's the 0-2 pitch to DeForest. Cold strike three, Garrett knew it. That was a nice pitch right there by Phelps. Beautiful pitch by Owen Phelps. And he gets one out here in the uh, top of the fourth inning. And Kyle Barnes, the second baseman, steps in on the left side with the runner on first and one out. Well, Kyle had a really nice hit back in that second inning. Quick throw to first. Oh, the runner wasn't... Looking like he was uh, really ready for that, but uh, Matt, Matty got back in there. Barnes in, left-handed batter, Phelps, the right-handed pitcher. Quick throw this time, and back standing now is Hildreth. Very small crowd here to begin the game, but it's filled in nicely since we've been here. Here's the pitch. That's a called strike. Runner going throw to second base. Safe. Wow, just under the tag. But what a throw by Devlin. That was a beautiful shot. Boy, another nice throw. What was the call? By Devlin. Right. No, but I mean, called him underneath. Greenfield thought they had him. Mm. But George did get it strike. in under the tag. But again, a nice, strong throw by the catcher, Kyle Devlin. But now there it is. Runner on second base with one out here in a 2-2 tie. Here's the set by Owen Phelps. Turns and fires down the second base. Hildreth gets back in safely. Yeah, but barely. Yeah, nice Hart. job right there by Hart coming on that back end of that bag. Hart snuck in there. Yeah, he did. A little daylight play there. You see the daylight between the shortstop and the first baseman. The, uh, the uh, shortstop, oftentimes they'll go over there. This pitch is fouled away on the left side, running it down. It's fouled by about three feet. As the third baseman Baird and the left fielder Peabody were taking a little look at it. It's a count up. Every once in a while, tell us. You see, Phelps has been able to escape damage most of the night He's here. He's the only one that knows the count. <laughs> hey, have a day, Jim. Have a day. Good question. All right. Show us. 
He won't show it. Arms now back in there in the left-handed batter's box. Runner takes the lead at second. Here's the pitch. Curveball is high for a ball. It almost had too much on it for a curveball, Jeff. Didn't give him enough time to really get anything on it. One and two. A little too much right, speed on that pitch by you. Phelps. Here's the set. And the pitch. And that's it. In the hole between third and short. Runner takes the turn at third, slips and falls. The runner. Now we'll oh. go down to second base as the ball squirted through Baird's oh. glove at third base. So a single and moving up on the throw. Runners now on second and third with one out. Well, Zach Renaud is up and then to get top of the order. <coughs> so big opportunity here for Zach. Zach ended up playing up at Pioneer and ended up doing a transfer over to <coughs> Frontier Regional. When he was a youngster and he was a freshman, he ended up being a starter on their varsity as a catcher. And now for this Frontier team, he's their right fielder. In a big spot for Zach right here with runners on second and third, with only one out here in the fourth and a 2-2 tie. Phelps looking to escape the jam. Greenfield will bring the infield in on the grass. And now, you know, we'll take a uh, timeout. Steps out on him. Top of the order, Connor Wakeness is on deck. The set by Phelps. Here's the pitch. And it's outside, ball one. Well, the one thing that Phelps hasn't been able to do in the last two innings is to get in some kind of a groove. And he keeps having to fight back against every batter, and that's not good. Here's the set, and the 1-0 pitch. And Penang goes to 2-0. Does have the open base at first, but then you're back to the top of the order. He would love to get the K here, get the second out of the inning, and get the infield back at usual depth. Here's the set. 2-0 pitch, swung on a miss, strike one. Quick throw to third, back easily though. What you got to do now, if you're Phelps, is you want to try to do what you can here to get this batter. Then you can bring that infield back with two outs and hope for Wakus to be able to get it out. Here's the set of the pitch, a curveball. Ooh, that nearly caught the play. Kyle Devlin held it there an extra second or maybe a second and a half there, but it is a ball. Three and one now to Zach Reynolds. Second and third with one out in a 2-2 tie. The set by Owen Phelps. Here's the pitch, fastball fouled back to the screen. And the count goes full, three and two. Big part of the game here, fourth inning. Again, at the high school level, we play seven inning ball games. This is getting uh, a little late here. Each team has had opportunities to really break it open and have not been able to do so. Three and two. The set by Phelps, the payoff pitch, curveball, popped on the right side. Hunter Campbell goes over, makes the catch. For the second out, the runners will hold. Two outs now, back to the top of the order in Connor Waitkus. Nice glove right there by Hunter Campbell. Good job being able to run that in. Something you always teach your first baseman is that when you get the ball, you gotta run it in. It's exactly what he did, and now, it's almost what happened to Greenfield. Greenfield had runners with second and third last inning, and they weren't able to play to anybody. Let's see what happens now, because Frontier now has two in score. Oh, uh, they're going to do the intentional walk. Yep. So down the first base goes Connor Rikas. That'll load the bases, so and now they'll have a play at any base. And the biggest at bat of the night so far is going to go to Brian Bauman, the shortstop number two batter. Ended up with a fielder's choice uh, over in that first inning, and then he ended up grounding out to Owen at the pitcher's mound back in the third inning. Here's the set by Phelps, and the pitch, curveball, just inside. Again, Devlin likes to hold it there, just that extra second. Greenfield's uh, bench not happy with uh, the home plate umpire right now. It goes to one and all. Base is loaded with two outs in a 2-2 game here in the fourth. <coughs> Phelps back on the rubber, sets the 1-0 pitch. Fastball fouled back to the screen. It's 1-1. One one. That's one that Bauman probably could have laid off and he could have had a 2-0, but he 
smacked his helmet after knowing that. Yeah. Probably shouldn't have swung at that one, Jeff. Yeah, got a little bit jumpy there. Yeah, and you got to think about this now. A walk is just as good as a hit when you got bases loaded, especially in a 2-2 game. Bauman back in there. One and one the count to him. Phelps looks down to Devlin. Gets the sign. Phelps sets, turns, and fires. Swung on a miss, strike two, and he's one pitch away from getting out of the jam. Ah, big opportunity here for Owen Phelps. This is how you get ahead of a batter at the right time. And here is the guy that you want to get right here if you're Owen Phelps. Let's see if he goes to the deuce here. It's been good most of the night. One ball, two strikes with two outs. Bases loaded, and the pitch, curveball, ground ball down the third base. Baird will take it right to the bag, and they get out of the jam. Big uh. pitching effort there by Owen Phelps. We go to the last of the fourth inning, and on the Greenfield Savings Bank scoreboard, Frontier 2, Greenfield 2. This is Bear Country 95.3. Wow. Stones, man. Yeah, man. That was my, a good job. <laughs> my voice is going. Is it? Yeah. I, I've got something. I've got something going on in my. I'm going to an ear, yeah. nose, and yeah. throat guy. Oh, oh so are you? I remember that. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. The base. All right. TV set had so many beer cans. Um, that night. Dave will take it out of the stop set here. Yeah. See where so we are. If you need me to take a half inning or something, just let me know. But yeah, I'll let you know. If you need me, you know. Is this the fourth inning? Still? I'm thinking about it. All right, no problem, bud. Yeah, bottom of the floor. Uh, bottom oh, floor. You guys want new lights on, right? Yeah. High school baseball on Bear Country 95.3. And tonight's game brought to you by CNA Repair and Equipment, by Scotty's on the Hill, and by Greenfield Savings Bank. Well, Bobby, that was a uh, very scary inning for Owen Phelps and for Greenfield, but he was able to work out of it. And now we'll see if the Green Wave can get something done here. Both teams with numerous opportunities to really break this game open, but have been uh, so far unable to do so. I know it, and if you look back and you say to yourself, well, wow, it's only two to two. Look how many base runners have been on for both of these teams. Well, it's because they both have been able to get out of pitches at the right time. And that one right there by Owen Phelps, really what helped him out is being able to get ahead of that last batter by getting ahead on that 0-2 count. Yep. And it definitely paid off in the end with that dribbler down to third base to get that out. 8-9-1 for Greenfield here in their last half of the fourth inning. Nate Hazelton, Ryan Cody, and David Carey. Hazelton in on the right side. And Gabe Guczynski out there now for his first full inning of work. He came on in relief of a Xavier Santiago in the third inning. That pitch is inside and low for a ball 1-0. Hazelton's the right fielder, right-handed batter. Where's the number five, the pitch? That's a ball high, two and oh. Well, back to what we talked about. If you're a pitcher, you want to be able to be ahead in the count, and right now, he's not. Kuczynski, that pitch is grounded down towards shortstop near the bag. And a nice throw, a nice throw over there by Brian Bauman over to Kiernan Freeman, and one down here. <coughs> Nate Hazelton is retired. Ryan Cody, the second baseman, now steps in. Yeah, but that was good hustle right there by Hazel. He did a nice job running down that first <laughs> base line. It only had him by a really about a one step. Well, that's something that he will always do. I've watched him play baseball, basketball, and football for several years now, and that's the one thing you know that he's he's oh, a yeah. hustler. He's a hustler, absolutely. And every coach, that's all you can ask for, man. You know. He pitches a ball to Cody. The next pitch is bounced with a curveball in front of the plate. And the count now goes to 2-0. and On deck <laughs> is the leadoff batter, David Carey. We're tied at two here in the last half of the fourth inning. Frontier scored two runs in the third. Greenfield with single runs in the first and the third. This next pitch is popped on the right side. Left fielder comes over and dives. Reno unable to come up with it. And the count, go, <coughs> excuse me, count goes to two and one. Mm -hmm. Voice is going here, Bobby. You yeah. Might, you might be uh, warming up in the bullpen here. That's totally fine. Be glad to help you out any way we can, bud. Uh, also want to just say that uh, Ryan Cody, you know, back in that second inning, he was able to get on on a walk, but was stranded because Carey wasn't able to do anything back in that second inning. So after an error and a walk, they had two runners. Two balls and one strike to Cody. Swung through a fastball there. Can now even up at two and two with David Carey on deck. 
Frontier two, Greenfield two, bottom four of this seven inning game. Here's the windup by Kaczynski. Two, two pitch, swung on a miss, strike three. Ah, nice job right there by Gachinski to be able to get Cody. And now we're back to the top of the order of the GHS order that's been pretty hot. But Carey has a strikeout and he flew out to DeForest back in the second inning. Two outs now here. David Carey settles in on the right side. Here's the lineup. First pitch in, squares to bunt, and he bunted through it. And the count goes to 0 and 1. No balls, one strike. Here's the windup and the pitch. That's up and in. And the count now goes to one and one. If Carey can keep the inning going, we'll see Owen Phelps the pitcher. Here's the windup and the pitch. Ground ball back to the mound. It goes off the glove of Kaczynski down towards second base. Glove there, throw over to first base. Nicely done by Barnes to Freeman. And the side is retired. Greenfield goes down one, two, three. In the fourth, we go to the fifth. Vets Field in Greenfield. Uh, Jeff Terrell, Bobby C. back here at Vets Field Jesus. as we get set for the Greenfield half of the fifth inning of this seven inning ball game. A 2 2 tie with Frontier. And Owen Phelps will be leading off. Busy times uh, in sports, not only uh, with the local high school kids because we've got tournament stuff happening as soon as up, this upcoming on, weekend, by the way, in some of the other sports, but uh, also regionally, you got the big Bruins game tonight, game three at Carolina with the Bees leading the Eastern Conference Finals 2 zip. We're smack dab in the middle of the NBA playoffs. Celtics, of course, are out of that. And the Red Sox open up a series against the Rockies at Fenway tonight. Here's a pitch, a cold strike to Owen Phelps, 0-1. Gabe Gachinski out for his second full inning of work. He set the wave down one, two, three in the fourth. This next pitch is inside, and it goes to one and one. He's another kid that delivers quick. Uh, another quick delivery pitcher, just like Santiago was. Here's the one, one pitch, fastball, and that's fouled over towards Davis Street. For the people that live on Davis Street, those backyards, and I know they put up that screen, but all summer long between the uh, high school games and the uh, Legion games in Babe Ruth, that's a lot of foul balls end up in backyards. Oh yeah. The pitch is high, two and two. It'll be Owen Phelps, Hunter Campbell, and Joel Peabody here in the Greenfield fifth and a two-two tie. Here's the windup and the pitch. Swung on a miss, strike three, strikeout for Gachinski and Owen Phelps has been retired. Well, Hunter Campbell came up with a big triple back in that third inning. And crush that pitch. And he's looking to try to get back on here with one out. And Greenfield really hanging tough here with Frontier. A great game going on here, a 2-2 here in the bottom of the fifth. Gachinski into his motion. That pitch is a ball, 1-0. Gachinski has kind of like a, kind of a, a fricky jerky motion. But he pitches really fast. Here's the windup and the 1-0 pitch. That's a ground ball in the left center field for a base hit in the hole between short and third. Hunter Campbell with another hit. One out single and Greenfield in business here in the fifth. Well, you know, back in that third inning where Greenfield was able to score a run, Joel Peabody ended up getting hit by a pitch from Xavier Santiago. And uh, he also walked back in the first inning. So he's already been on twice. Hunter Campbell takes his lead at first. Pitch to Joel Peabody, taken for a called strike, it's 0-1. Well, I don't know if Campbell wants to try to take on DeForest on this one. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a gambling man, I ain't gambling. <laughs> he has a gun. Yeah, that kid can throw, man, what a laser. He threw Hazleton early in the game and it was not close. Quick throw, Hunter Campbell in standing. So Campbell on first with one out, Peabody at the dish, 2-2 two, two tie, bottom five with one out. Campbell now takes a little bit of a longer lead. And there's a line drive foul down the right field side. And the count goes to 0-2 to Joel Peabody. On deck is Cam Baird, the third baseman. Well, big spot right here for Peabody if he can be able to get on base and get a couple of guys on here for Greenfield in the bottom of the fifth. Here's the set, 0-2 pitch. Nope, first a quick check-in on Campbell, and Hunter is back diving this time. No balls, two strikes on Peabody, one out, bottom five, 2-2 two, two tie. Both teams 
with a lot of squandered opportunities. Here's the pitch. There's a ground ball back to the mound. They're going to go to second. Out there, return throw to first base, safe. So Campbell is out on the fielder's choice, reaching first base is Joel Peabody. Two outs now, and Cam Baird will come to the plate. Oh, good hustle right there by Peabody. They almost had a double play there, Frontier, but he was able to get in. Way to run through the bag there. Cam Baird, what a great game he's had. Yes. Two singles here today, an RBI. Really done a great job. He also made a beautiful play at third base to get Jacob Bryant out at the plate, which could have gave Frontier the lead. So a nice game by Baird here so far tonight. Two outs now, runner on first for Greenfield. 2-2 two, two, tied, Baird squares to bunt. Fouls it over to Skinny Williams. And it's a foul ball, it's 0-1. I've noticed that Greenfield's uh, trying to do a lot of bunting, but I hate to say this, Jeff, but a lot of them looks real sloppy. Yeah. A lot of these bunts have looked really, like, real sloppy. Well, it makes you wonder if we get to the sixth or seventh inning and they need to lay one down, will they be able to do it? Mm. Quick throw to first base. Back in there is Joel Peabody. I always say that, you know, it's a great it's a great opportunity if you can to be able to bunt, but if your players aren't very good at executing the bunt, it's it's a waste of a bat as far as I'm concerned. Here's the pitch, check swing, and that is a ball. One and one to Cam Baird. Jared Hart awaits on deck if Baird can keep the inning going. Greenfield with a run run first with two outs. We're tied at two here in the fifth. Here's a set by Kaczynski. The pitch, ground ball down to third base. Glove there, strong throw to first base. Nicely done there. Hildreth to Freeman. And Greenfield is done in the fifth. We go to the sixth. GCTV's Game of the Week is brought to you in part by Pine Hill Orchards. On Greenfield Road in Coleraine is open seven days a week serving breakfast and lunch in the restaurant. And in the store, there are homemade fruit and cream pies, apple cider, and so much more. For event information and what is happening at the farm, go to their website, pinehillorchards.com. Maury and Schmidt, General Contractors, is your local all-service contractor for commercial and residential work. Locally owned by Bob and Robin Provost, their work and reputation speaks for itself. For information and to see their work, go to their website, maurianschmidt.com, or call them at 773-3176. Cruise and travel located at Montague Street in Turner's Falls can help you with your next vacation plans. Let Deb and Mary help you through the process on booking your next vacation. At Cruise and Travel, we go the extra mile so that your miles become the best vacation ever. Call them today at 863-3143. Riffs North Restaurant and Bar, located at 116 Avenue A in Turner's Falls, has the best French fries in the state. Plus, they have 10 Massachusetts gourmet burgers you must try before you die. Local owner Rich Lyman invites you to stop in and try them. For hours and menu information, go online to riffsnorth.com. Dylan Chevrolet on Main Street in Greenfield is your local hometown dealership with the largest selection of Chevy cars and trucks. They also have the best service department in the valley and an auto body shop too. Locally owned by Tom and Jay Dillon, you always get a good deal every day at Dillon Chevrolet. Thanks folks. Greenfield Savings Bank is your local hometown bank. For personal and commercial accounts, stop by a local Greenfield Savings Bank location near you with locations throughout Franklin and Hampshire counties. Online at greenfieldsavings.com. Valley Steel Stamp, located at 15 Greenfield Road in the Industrial Park in Greenfield, is locally owned by Steve Capshaw. They are now hiring. Be a part of something big. For job information, go to vsscnc.com slash careers. Franklin First Federal Credit Union, located at 55 Newton Street in Greenfield. At Franklin First Federal Federal Credit Union, you always get the best loan rates on home and auto, plus the best service from local people who live here in Franklin County. For more information, go to their website, franklinfirst.com. The Northfield Golf Club, located at 31 Holton Street in Northfield, is a beautiful nine-hole golf course, offering a challenging golf experience seven days a week. Locally owned by the Snow family, they also have a beautiful pavilion for weddings, parties, or any occasion. Contact Shelby for more information at shelby at northfieldgolfcourse.com. Manny's Appliance, 51 River Street in Greenfield has the best selection of appliances in the area with local salespeople who care about you, the customer, with better prices than the big box store. Come in to see their huge selection at 51 River Street in Greenfield. Fitzgerald Real Estate located at 116 Federal Street in Greenfield. Green Fitzgerald knows all about Franklin County and the local market. Let her professional team at Fitzgerald Real Estate help you through the process of buying or selling your home. For information online at Fitzgerald
www.joerealestate.com or call 774-6317. Your local Dunkin' Donuts, locally owned by the Mata family with three Greenfield locations, including two drive through locations on Federal Street and also on the Mohawk Trail. In Greenfield, America runs on Dunkin'. Western Mass and the States in baseball and softball, but we've uh, had our fair share of uh, regular season games, and we're not done yet, not, in, not by a long shot. We're going to be at Turner's Falls High School tomorrow night as the Thunder take on the Montmartre Senators in girls softball. Boy, Jay Tyler's really been <laughs> unbelievable in the circle this year, Jeff. <laughs> and, you know, against Greenfield the other night, she literally had a no-hit shutout going into the bottom of the sixth inning, yeah. and everything went away. Yeah. Yeah. It was the... Freshman Kelsey Richardson getting a hit, and then when Reagan Hickey ended up getting that double, it ended up scoring Richardson, and there went the shutout and the no hit. All right, Owen Phelps had a 1 2 3 inning his last time he was out there on the bump, as he has settled in nicely. He has thrown a lot of pitches, but you know, he's a veteran, he's a senior, you know, he knows which way the wind's blowing by. Yeah, he does. And you know, under these circumstances of the game today, being on a chilly night, he's done a really nice job being able to keep his arm conditioned because I haven't seen him even jerking in any other way. He feels comfortable so far. Matt Hildreth leads off for Frontier here in the sixth inning of this seven inning game. And the first pitch swinging on a line into a left center field that's going to fall in for a base hit. Lead-off single for Matt Hildreth. And the number seven batter now, Garrett DeForest, the catcher, will step up. It's Hildreth, DeForest, and Barnes here in the sixth inning for Frontier in a 2-2 tie. Well, now Matt Hildreth ended up with a base hit also in that fourth inning, so he's already got two hits on the day. And DeForest struck <laughs> out back in the fourth. And they check in on first base, but back easily is Matt Hildreth. So DeForest at the plate, Kyle Barnes awaits on deck. Phelps looks into Devlin. Runner going, pitches in the dirt. Devlin scoops it up, no chance to get the runner. Stolen base, easily done there by Matt Hildreth. So the go ahead run now in scoring position with nobody out. Well, Greenfield's always seem to have problems when they play Frontier, losing it late in the game, and hopefully this won't happen here tonight if you're a Green Wave fan. Of course, if you're a Frontier fan, you know that this has been a trend that's been in your favor over the last couple of seasons. Here's the pitch. Fouled off on the right side, out of play. Hunter Campbell took a look, but that's gonna be in one of those yards over there. One ball, one strike. Runner on second base is Matt Hildreth. Nobody out here. Top half of the sixth inning, seven inning ball game, a 2-2 tie. DeForest back in there. Wayhander's batter's box. Here's the set. 1-1 one, one pitch. Swung through and missed, but the ball goes all the way to the backstop. And on the third base now is Hildreth, so he's 90 feet away now with nobody out. And that was a wild pitch. I believe. Well, it was a swing strike. Well, how, would, how would you go, Bob? Uh, I, I think pass, that pass. I think that was just a low. It was just a low pitch, but with the swing, I think it caught Devlin off guard. I, yep. I that's what I'm thinking. You know, I think it cost De, caught Devlin off guard, and that's why he missed that ball. Well, the ball goes back to the screen, and now Matt Hildreth oh. is right there on third base. The count now one and two to Garrett DeForest. Greenfield pulls the infield in now with the runner on third. Here's the pitch. Popped up on the right side. Hunter Campbell taking a look near the frontier dugout. It's just over it. And the count remains one and two. Well, the one good thing here is, is that Phelps is ahead in the count. This is a guy that he definitely wants to get. If he can be able to get that strikeout, that'll be one out with a runner on third. You're gonna still have to keep that infield in, even with the one out. Yep. Runner on third with nobody out. One and two to DeForest. The pitch from Phelps. That's a ground ball down to second base. They're going to come to the plate. Throw home. It's safe. What a nice slide right there by Eldreth. The ball squirted away from Devlin briefly. One would have counted anyway. He was definitely beat with a, again on a very nice slide. So Frontier takes a 3-2 lead and the runner reaches on the fielder's choice. That's DeForest at first with uh, still nobody out. Yeah, but boy, what a nice throw there by Cody, but the 
jump that Hildreth ended up having at third base, yeah. he literally was, his whole body was across the plate by the time Devlin even tagged him. So that was an easy play for them to score. So DeForest on first base with nobody out front here now leading by a score of three to two and number eight batter, second baseman Kyle Barnes at the dish. They throw to first base, DeForest back easily. Well, I'll tell you right now, DeForest, if that was a good throw by Owen Phelps to Campbell, I think he probably would have been out. Phelps looks towards first, sets. He'll throw to first. Runner is back easily. Frontier three, Greenfield two. It has been tight throughout. Greenfield scored first. And a quick throw, they got him. And DeForest wow. is out. He's out actually out of the baseline, and he's also injured. Yeah, and I tell you what he did. He hurt it's that his, hand. He, yep, he, yeah, it's that's his the left hand. hand. And that was the hand that he hurt when he ended up making one of the plays here earlier in this game. Yeah, he is now doubled over in pain. Skinny Williams' his coach was coaching third base. Now will go out. He's he is bent over yeah. between no, first and second base. Really he got picked off. Bad. Nice play there by Phelps. First out of the inning. And now there's nobody on base yeah. but a primary concern. Garrett to force the catcher. And oh, no. that yeah, don't look good at all. It doesn't all. look good at all. It's, he's holding his left wrist. I hope he didn't break his wrist when he went back to first base. Yeah, now he's moving, and now he's kind of jogging it off. Tough yeah. kid. I think he's going to be okay, actually. But he's in a lot of pain. He will now come off. So one out here in the Frontier sixth inning. The Red Hawks have scored earlier in the inning. And now no one on base, and we go to the bottom of the order, Zach Moreno. I, I, sorry, Barnes is still batting after the, uh, after the uh, pickoff play at first. Coach Skinny Williams even took his hat off and he's looking up at the sky and he's like, oh boy, I hope my catcher's gonna be all right. It's a big loss if uh, he's not gonna be able to continue in this game. Here's the windup and the pitch. Curveball in there for a called strike. 0-1. Gotta give credit where credit's due. Nice job by Owen Phelps to be able to get the forest on that play. Oh, and now can work from a full windup. Here's the next pitch, and that is a little bit high, one and one. On deck is Zach Reno, the right fielder, and then back to the top of the order for Connor Waitkus. They can keep it going here. From tier three, Greenfield two in the sixth. Here's the pitch. Too high, two and one. Solid game here today for Connor <coughs> Barnes. Two singles, had a single in the second, also had a single in the fourth. Phelps into his motion. The 2 1 pitch. That's in there for a called strike, and the count now even at 2 and 2. Barnes, left handed batter's box, back in there. Here comes Owen Phelps. Here's the pitch. Curveball, called strike three. Oh, nice pitch right there by Owen Phelps to be able to pick up the second out of the inning. Now Renaud, the final ninth batter here. Um, has the been lineup. there most, that, that mm -hmm. deuce has been there most of the night, Bobby. He has done job. a nice job with that curveball over the last couple of weeks. And the right fielder, Zach Reno, is stepping in on the right side with two outs now. Nobody on Frontier 3, Greenfield 2. Here's the pitch, and that's low in the dirt. 1 and 0. Oh. If Zach can keep it going, back to the top of the order in Connor Wakeus. You know, I think Owen's done a nice job against some of these batters trying to get that fastball strike first and then come yeah. back with the deuce. Little pitch, squares to bunt, and pretty much missed it. And the count goes to one and one. So again, we still have no rain here. The rain has held off throughout the night. I'll take a quick look at the radar here in a moment. We were hoping to get the game in. Looks like we will. We're in the sixth inning already. Phelps into his motion. And the pitch, curveball too high. In fact, over the head of the batter. Right now it goes to two and one. Well, here's a guy you want to be able to get. You want to get that ninth batter in the order if you can here. And this is a spot where Owen Phelps really needs to get onto this sixth inning to get his team up to hit. 
The 2 1 pitch curveball is high, 3 and 1. So he was one pitch away from walking the number nine batter. Yeah, and he flew out to Hunter Campbell and he also uh, grounded out to the shortstop. Make him hit it, old dog. Come on. Three balls and one strike. Here's the windup and the pitch in there for a called strike. It's 3 and 2. That's a nice pitch right there, right at the knees, and inside corner as well. That's a tough one to hit, too, let me tell you, if you're Renault. Phelps now a pitch away from ending the inning. Rocks and fires, curveball, swung on a miss, straight three. They will have to throw to first base, they do, and the side is retired. But Frontier gets a run, and they have taken a 3-2 lead on the Greenfield Savings Bank scoreboard. Greenfield coming up next in the bottom of the sixth inning here on Bear Country, 95.3. That's a big inning right here, man. Mm -hmm. Big inning. Greenfield's got to come through on the bottom of the order here. They do, yeah. These guys got to step it up because they haven't done anything. All right, Bud, are we ready for an ID yet? Not quite. 745. Down there. Oh, down there. Down there. Down there. Down there. <laughs> well, Lisa Albert. All right, bud, we'll take it out of I Albert Hearing Services with music, please. That's not, not, not professional baseball. Wow. They've done that forever. They have. Me too. I never saw that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Love, Al Love Lisa Albert, man. He's okay. He's and okay. tonight's game here on Bear Country 95.3, brought to you by Jerry Johnson and Associates Realtors, Camelot Carpet Cleaners, and by Rouse Towing Service. Jared Hart will lead off for Greenfield in the last half of the sixth inning. It'll be Hart, Devlin, and Hazelton scheduled to bat here. That's six, seven, and eight. Frontier three. Greenfield too. Well, this part of the order is really going to start stepping it up for the green wave here. But I got to say one thing about Kaczynski is he's done a nice job since he's come in this game to replace Xavier Santiago. But like I was telling everybody, he deals really fast, so it doesn't really leave the batter a lot of time. First pitch, by the way, was fouled back to the plate, and the count is 0-1. Next pitch by Kaczynski, and that's going to be low, and the count now goes to 1-1. One and one. Devlin on deck, and then we'll see Hazelton. And if anyone can reach, we'll see Ryan Cody, the number nine batter. Frontier three, Greenfield two. Wind up by Gachinski, the one one. Inside, just off the plate, two and one. Oh, big spot right here for Hart. They need base runners. The wind up, the pitch, lays down a bunt, third base side. Throw down the first base, wide of the bag. Hart has reached on an infield single to lead off the sixth inning. Wow, that was a really good bunt. Matter of fact, it just stayed in between that white line and really made DeForest literally have to turn his whole body to be able to throw that ball, which was off, and that's why Hart was able to get there for a nice infield hit. I think that was insane. Runner on first, nobody out. Devlin at the plate. Frontier three, Greenfield two. Hart takes his lead. Set by Kaczynski. Turns and fires. Devlin lays one down. This is a sack bunt. Back to the mound. Throw to first is high. Did they get him? No. He is out. Runner to third. And it goes wide. And the runner is going to score. Hart has scored on a wild throw. They did record the out at first on Devlin's sacrifice bunt. And then they tried to get Hart at third. It went way over the third baseman's head. And Hart is waved home, and the game is tied at three. Can you believe that? Wow, unbelievable. Greenfield, very aggressive base running. It doesn't always pay off. This time it did. And that was, that was an unearned run. I mean, yeah. it happened as an unearned run error. Yeah, error from on the Keenan, first, yeah, from Keenan Freeman. Freeman yeah. Throwing error went over the third baseman's head and uh, would not have gotten Hart would have been safe at third. But the ball went over to the third baseman's head, went out of play, and Hart was awarded home plate. So we're now tied at three, one out, nobody on base, 
And now they have a conference at the mound here. That was a crazy play, Bobby. That but the sure bottom was. line is, is we're, right, we're right back where we started an yeah. hour and a half ago. Exactly. And the other thing is, too, is, is Greenfield went back to that small ball again by bunting two guys. Yep. Even with a 2-1 count, they still went and bunted hard, which was very surprising to me, to be honest with you, Jeff. And uh, they're working that small ball, but guess what? It just paid off right there with that error from Freeman. I'll tell you, Freeman yeah, got charged with the throwing there. He actually made a out. nice play in terms of recording the out by keep holding the bag as uh, Kyle Devlin was bearing down on him. So a good play there, but the throw, however, was lacking. There's a line drive up towards second base. Fielded there, a quick throw to first base. Got him! Oh, oh, that was close. Wow, that was real close. What a play right there by the second baseman from Frontier. Hazelton is out. Barnes made a nice wow. play there. Committed an error earlier in the game, but he got Hazelton by just a whisker. I mean, that was very close. And he was hustling, too, down that line. Wow, that was a good play right there by Barnes to be mm. able to get Hazelton for the second out here in the inning. That is two outs. And Sack. we got a pinch batter now Jake for Sack. Greenfield. Yep, and Jake it's going to be Jake Sack. Jake Sack. We'll step in, right-handed batter with two outs, nobody on, in a 3-3 tie here in the sixth. The windup and the pitch in there for a called strike. 1-0. And, oh. and I, you know, they got the re-entry rule here, Jeff, so Cody could come back in. Here's the pitch, Sack with a line drive out of the right field, that's a base hit. Nice hit right there by Sacker. Or the field if Renault gets it in, it's Sack with a Pinch hit in the right field with two outs, and now Greenfield with the go-ahead run on first base with two outs. And a big spot here, top of the order, it's David Carey. Well, been a little quiet night here for David Carey. Uh, he has struck out, he flew out to the catcher, and he was put out from Barnes to first baseman Freeman. So he's 0 for 3. Here's the set by Gachinski. Sack takes his lead. Here's the first pitch. In there for a call strike. Ball gets away from the catcher to force. He will not throw. And now Sack in scoring position with two outs. And you mentioned you can have a quiet night. Yeah, that, that's the thing in sports. Whatever sport you're playing, you can have a quiet game for most of the game. And then you get a big spot and you can end up being the hero. Yeah, absolutely. Nice hit right there by Sacker. Yeah, with a pinch hit for Cody. Now a big spot right here for Gary. And the next pitch, and this is popped up in the infield over towards second base. And putting it away is Kyle Barnes, and the side is retired. But Greenfield on a crazy play on the sacrifice bunt and the overthrow. They have tied the game at three on the Greenfield Savings Bank scoreboard. GCTV's Game of the Week is brought to you in part by Pine Hill Orchards. On Greenfield Road in Coleraine is open seven days a week serving breakfast and lunch in the restaurant and in the store. There are homemade fruit and cream pies, apple cider, and so much more. For event information and what is happening at the farm, go to their website, pinehillorchards.com. Maury and Schmidt, General Contractors is your local all-service contractor for commercial and residential work locally owned by Bob and Robin Provost their work and reputation speaks for itself for information and to see their work go to their website maurianschmidt.com or call them at 773-3176 cruise and travel located at Montague Street in Turner's Falls can help you with your next vacation plans let Deb and Mary help you through the process on booking your next vacation at cruise and travel we go the extra mile so that your miles become the best vacation ever call them today at 863-314 Riffs North Restaurant and Bar, located at 116 Avenue A in Turner's Falls, has the best French fries in the state. Plus, they have 10 Massachusetts gourmet burgers you must try before you die. Local owner Rich Lyman invites you to stop in and try them. For hours and menu information, go online to riffsnorth.com. Dylan Chevrolet on Main Street in Greenfield is your local hometown dealership with the largest selection of Chevy cars and trucks. They also have the best service department in the valley and an auto body shop, too. Locally owned by Tom and Jay Dillon, you all 
always get a good deal every day at Dillon Chevrolet. Thanks, folks. Greenfield Savings Bank is your local hometown bank. For personal and commercial accounts, stop by a local Greenfield Savings Bank location near you with locations throughout Franklin and Hampshire counties online at greenfieldsavings.com. Valley Steel Stamp, located at 15 Greenfield Road in the Industrial Park in Greenfield, is locally owned by Steve Capshaw. They are now hiring. Be a part of something big. For job information, go to vsscnc.com slash careers. Franklin First Federal Credit Union, located at 55 Newton Street in Greenfield. At Franklin First Federal Credit Union, you always get the best loan rates on home and auto, plus the best service from local people who live here in Franklin County. For more information, go to their website, franklinfirst.com. The Northfield Golf Club, located at 31 Holton Street in Northfield, is a beautiful nine-hole golf course offering a challenging golf experience seven days a week. Locally owned by the Snow family, they also have a beautiful pavilion for weddings, parties, or any occasion. Contact Shelby for more information at Shelby at NorthfieldGolfCourse.com. Manny's Appliance, 51 River Street in Greenfield, has the best selection of appliances in the area with local salespeople who care about you, the customer, with better prices than the big box store. Come in to see their huge selection at 51 River Street in Greenfield. Fitzgerald Real Estate, located at 116 Federal Street in Greenfield. Green Fitzgerald knows all about Franklin County and the local market. Let her professional team at Fitzgerald Real Estate help you through the process of buying or selling your home. For information online at FitzgeraldRealEstate.com or call 774-6317. Your local Dunkin' Donuts, locally owned by the Mata family with three Greenfield locations, including two drive through locations on Federal Street and also on the Mohawk Trail. In Greenfield, America runs on Dunkin'. And we are back here at Vets Field, Greenfield High School. Great ball game here tonight. Frontier, the really head of the class in terms of Hampshire League Baseball this year anyway. But they're struggling with the wave. They beat Greenfield on April 30th, 3-2. It's a 3-3 game here in a game that Greenfield really would love to have. A loss certainly doesn't put them out of postseason consideration, but a win would be a huge boost. You know, I was looking at what the big games were of this week, and this right here was the game of the week yeah. of what I looked for, all the schedules of what teams were playing who, and this was the game of the week right here, and an opportunity for Greenfield to be able to pick up a huge victory, like you said, Jeff, that'll definitely help out their playoff implications if they can be able to walk away with a victory here at home. All right, for Frontier here in the top half of the seventh inning, it's the top of the order. Connor Waitkus, Brian Bauman, and Kiernan Freeman in a 3-3 tie. Look who's out on the bump, Owen Phelps. Gutsy performance, he is still out there. Wind up and the pitch, and that's bounced in front of the plate. It's 1-0. and oh. Went back to that curveball again to try to get that first pitch for a strike. I think he's been very effective by going with the fastball first and then coming back with those curveballs. It's been working for him. One ball, no strikes. Here's the pitch to Waitkus. That's in there for a called strike. It's one and one. And I'm looking down the left field line, Bobby. It was a really small crowd when we first got here, but yeah, it's I, think, really filled in. I think people have been hearing the broadcast and said, I got seen by Vets Field. Check <laughs> this out. Here's the pitch, fouled back out of play over our heads. And the count now goes to one and two. Again, Wakis, Bauman, and Freeman here in the seventh and final inning. Well, Wakis has been on every single time here so far. He has a single and has walked twice. The windup and the one-two pitch from Phelps. That is up and away, two and two. Not a bad wasted pitch right there. Owen Phelps looks down at Kyle Devlin. Devlin in turn looking towards his dugout for the sign. Puts it down, the windup and the two-two pitch. Cold strike three. Oh, what a pitch right there by Phelps. That was beautiful. Definitely wake us. Thought that that was inside. No, that was not. Yeah. That was a beautiful pitch. They caught a decent amount of the plate there from what we could see. Absolutely. And we're right here on top, too. So Big out. You get that first guy out for Phelps. And now we go to the shortstop, Brian Bauman, number two hitter on the right side. One out. Nobody on in the top of the seventh inning in a 3-3 tie. Phelps. 
It's a sign, but actually... They're trying to say whether he's in... Yeah, yeah Artie Ar, 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 Burke is really saying you got to know where that line is. Yeah, he's, he's a little bit too close, and now he takes uh, just a little bit back away from the plate. Bauman back in there. That's a called strike, 0-1. Phelps dealing right now. Yeah, well, you know, he's playing... He's really playing a great game here today. Done a nice job on the offensive end. He's been pitching really well. Staying ahead of batters is the key. Here's the pitch curveball. That is low, and the count goes to one and one. One out here on the top of the seventh inning. Frontier three, Greenfield three. Nobody on base. Phelps into his motion. Here's the one one pitch. That's called strike two, one and two. Yeah, that was a little borderline right there, but uh, they gave it to him, and uh, he does have that strike there on Bauman. One ball, two strikes. Phelps turns, fires, curveball, cold strike three. Oh, another big pitch right there by Owen Phelps. Two big strikeouts here in the top of the seventh inning in a tie game. But now they have to deal with Kieran Freeman. The left-handed hitting first baseman. He is a good hitter, Bobby. He sure is, and he hit a beautiful triple back in the third inning, and he also walked in the first, so he's already been on twice today. Here's the windup, and the first pitch to Freeman. That is a ball. Didn't miss by much, one and oh. Frontier three, Greenfield three here. Top of the seventh. Seven inning ball games at high school level, as you know by now. Nobody on base with two outs. Phelps into his motion. The 1 0 pitch. Ground ball down the first base. Taken there by Hunter Campbell. 1 2 3 inning for Phelps and Greenfield. We go to the last of the seventh inning on the Greenfield Savings Bank scoreboard. Greenfield 3, Frontier 3 on Bear Country 95.3. You couldn't yeah, ask, I mean, you couldn't ask for a better, you couldn't I mean, ask for All right, bud, we'll take it out of Hubie's I mean, and we'll save the GSB spot I mean, for the next either half inning watching. or the end of the game. Greenfield wins yes. it here. Jeffrey, I actually got the heart of the order up now. Yeah. This is it. Good chance to win it right here. I got the heart of the order. We got Phelps Campbell. I think there's a lot of I always root for Greenfield. Greenfield comes up. The heart of the order coming up. They scored single runs in the first, third, and sixth innings. Frontier with two in the third, one in the sixth. We have a three all tie. Greenfield coming up now in the last half of the seventh inning with a chance to win the ball game. Frontier has not lost a game on the field this year. Again, their lone loss was way back at the beginning of the season to Frontier was a forfeit loss. They have run the table since then, but they're in a battle big time with this Greenway. <laughs> no, Greenfield really playing a nice game here tonight. You know, both teams, honestly, have both left opportunities on the base pass. So it really could have been anybody's game here tonight, Jeff. And right now, Greenfield does have the opportunity here with Phelps leading it off here in the top, uh, bottom of the seventh. Yep, it'll be Phelps, Campbell, and Peabody batting the pitches low for a ball, 1-0. and oh. So it's the 2-3-4 batters here in the seventh for Greenfield against Gabe Kuczynski. Well, back in the first inning, Phelps had that beautiful double. Here's the pitch, that's a strike. And the count now goes to 1-1. One and one. Greenfield would love to get that first runner on here. Here's the windup and the pitch, it's popped up. Dangerous in the shallow right field, and that ball is going to be a foul ball just by a foot or so. That was in no man's land, Bobby, and nearly perfect placement there by Owen Phelps. And the funny thing is, is you had three frontier guys that were all around it, and it landed right between all three. Yep. Yep. Freeman, the first baseman, Barnes, the second baseman, and Reynold, the right fielder, were all going for it. No one could come up with it, but it did drop just foul. So the count goes to one and two to Phelps. Here's Kaczynski's one, two pitch. Check swing and that ball is high. They check down first base. He did, oh. he did not go. No. Not even close. Not even close. And if he did swing at that one, oh, he would want that back <laughs> real bad, trust me. Two balls, two strikes. 
Nobody out here in the seventh and a 3-3 tie. Ground ball down the first base, taken by Freeman to the bag himself. One out here, we go now to Hunter Campbell, who's been really, his entire career, Bobby, I mean, he, he's a good player anyway, but he's always been clutch. He's been the guy that's made big plays in football, big shots in basketball, and a big moment here for Hunter. Absolutely. Triple in a single for him so far in this one here tonight. Yeah, you got to be careful with this guy. Yeah, and I'll tell you right now, watch out, because Peabody and Baird, you know, they could do some too. So you need you need some base runners right here if you're Greenfield. Gachinski into his motion. First pitch to Campbell. Ground ball right back to the mound. Gachinski up with it. Throws the first base. Got him. And quickly, two outs now for Greenfield here in the seventh. We may be looking at extra innings here. Yeah, great job right there by Gachinski. Excellent job by Gabe to be able to settle down. He's done an excellent job in relief here for Frontier tonight. And he's been able to keep his team in this. If it wasn't for that throwing error from first baseman Freeman, Greenfield wouldn't be tied right now. Two outs, nobody on, and a 3-3 tie. And the first pitch is a ball high to Joel Peabody, the left fielder and cleanup batter. And the decision that needs to be made is if uh, you're going to bring out Owen Phelps here in the eighth. This pitch is fouled back to the screen. One ball and one strike. If Peabody can keep it going, you got Cam Baird. You know, I, I think that... Owen oh, Phelps looks fine. I mean, as long as he's feeling all right, yeah. I mean, I'd, I'd go with him. I mean, I think he's dealing well. Here's the windup. 1-1 one, one pitch. That is high. Nearly got him. Count goes to 2-1. and one. He was hit earlier in the game. He would gladly take first base in this situation. That he's the winning run. Yeah, and Baird already... Showed you how you can be able to get a base hit and score an RBI. He did it in the first. Here's the pitch. And that's it out into right center field. And the center fielder will cruise over. Connor Wakus puts it away. Greenfield goes down one, two, three in the seventh. On to extra innings we go. Top of the eighth inning. And on the Greenfield Savings Bank scoreboard, Greenfield three and Frontier three on Bear Country 95.3. All right, Dave, we'll take it out of GSB, and you can go to the top of the order in terms of our spots, and you can also do an ID here if you didn't do one already. I can't remember if you did or not. Uh, right, so what do we got? Oh, they're, they're going with Baird. Yep. Brody Baird. Wow. They're bringing Brody in. Yep. And where's Owen going? Mm. Out of the game. I don't even see. I don't see Owen's Owen. at second base. No, he's not. He's out. playing a second. Second base. He yep. went to second base. He went to second. Yeah. Okay, yeah. <clears throat> they took Carey out. Colby out. Colby out. Yeah. Oh, it took Cody out, right. So what, what was the transaction Cody that in just happened there? Yeah, Cody, Cody yeah. is out. He's in center, I think. Oh, number is he? One, number one, right? Yeah, he's number one. So he's out in center? I think no, so. No, 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 no. No, nope, he's not. That's Carrie. Oh, that's Carrie. Yeah, Carrie's still out there. Yeah, yeah. yeah Carrie's in center. Yeah, Baird's in and Cody's spot. Well, after a really strong pitching performance, especially late in the game, in really crucial situations, Tom Sushnik has made a move on the mound. Owen Phelps is done for the night in terms of pitching. He's now out there at second base. And Brody Baird now. We'll take over on the now. <clears throat> well, Brody's done some relief pitching for the Green Wave here. It was a tough loss for them against Hopkins Academy last week in a game where they had full control, Jeff. They did, and ended yeah. up losing that one three to two. Um, so here's one where Baird's hoping to be able to be able to save the day here for not only Owen Phelps, but also for his team. So this is a big spot for Brody here tonight. And uh, out there at second base now for Greenfield is Owen Phelps, the former pitcher. Yeah, he's going to take the throw, too, on that. There we go. And another big spot here is the big guy, big Jacob Bryant. You never know what he can do. He could pop one right over the fence here. He's got that much power, Jeff. He does. And left field here at uh, Vets Field, that is a poke. It's poking right field, 350 down the line. I mean, exactly. Oh, yeah. You generally don't see the ball hit out of here. 
very, very rarely. All right, top of the eighth inning. And now calling timeout will be Jacob Bryant. It'll be Bryant, Blight, and Hildreth, the four, five, and six batters scheduled here in the eighth. The pitch is in there for a strike from Baird. 0 and 1. Well, the key for a guy who's new coming into a game, of course, is to stay ahead of the batters. And now another call, timeout by the batter. This is something that they're working on at the minor league level and some of the collegiate league, the independent leagues, and then eventually at the major league level, the number of times you can call timeout. Here's the pitch. There's a line drive in the left field. That is a base hit. Fielding it on a couple of hops is the left fielder, Joel Peabody. Gets it in. A leadoff single for Jacob Bryant here in the eighth inning for Frontier in a 3-3 tie. And Corbin Blake, the DH, will come up. Well, Corbin has hit twice to the shortstop and also to the pitcher. Hasn't reached base yet, but this could be a big spot for him right now with Brian on first. Greenfield will have the third baseman in on the grass. Shortstop and second baseman at double play depth. Hunter Campbell holding the runner on first base. Quick throw over there. Back in safely. Blight is a right-handed batter. Nobody out, runner on first, 3-3, tie in the eighth. Here's the pitch, in there for a called strike. 0-1. Oh nice pitch right there by Brody Baird. Getting ahead of Blight. Matt Hildreth is on deck for the Hawks. Baird sets. Quick throw to first base. Back safely is Jacob Bryant. I don't know if I'd gamble trying to steal Bryant here, but I do want to keep him honest if you can. You know, if it was somebody like Hildreth or DeForest out there, why not? Here's the pitch, fouled off on the right side out of play. Of course, you want to get that lead runner into scoring position if you can, Jeff, but with the speed of Bryant, not being the speed of the DeForest or Hildreth, yep. you, you want to be careful in situations like this, especially when you got the leadoff batter here with no outs. Yeah, and Blight's a number five guy. You don't really want to bunt him necessarily. You want him to swing the bat. No balls, two strikes to Blight. Runner on first with nobody out. 3-3 three, three tie here in the eighth. Here's the set by Brody Baird. Here's the pitch. That's a fastball high. Not close. Count goes to one and two. <clears throat> Nice plate discipline there by Blight to let that one go. Yeah, we'll take a shot at first. That was a little bit closer. Hunter Campbell applying the tag. And he's back in there safely. Jacob Bryant on first. Nobody out. Blight at the dish. One and two is the count. Here's the set. And the pitch. And that's a foul ball down the left field line. We'll take a look. And count remains one and two. You nice on stinger right there by Blight. You, you felt it getting oh, a little yeah. colder here tonight. <laughs> now, as you notice, it's gotten a lot chillier since game time here. And Blight was sitting there rubbing his hands after that one. Now, we're at 48 degrees when we started. We're down to 43 now. Yeah, you're checking at first base again. <laughs> Brian's like, come on, man. Look, look how dirty he's getting now. He is covered and, with mud. And he just sort of just sort of laid himself out <laughs> to get back to the first base. Uh, I just thought it was pretty funny on the way we saw him going back to the base there. Here's the set. Long set. One, two pitch. Nope, we're going to throw over the first base again. This time a kind of a little lollipop throw. Like I said, they're just trying to keep him honest so that they don't get him into scoring position. But then again, the way Skinny Williams has been coaching here tonight, Jeff, they've had a lot of hit and runs. Baird gets the sign from Kyle Devlin. The one-two pitch. In there, called straight three. That's a big out for the Green Wave. So one out, runner on first base, and that'll bring up Matt Hildreth. Well, Hildreth has had himself a really good game here tonight. A couple of base hits, 
and also a scored run too, very fast. And now Kyle Devlin will go out to talk with his pitcher, Brody Baird. Wow, that was a big strikeout right there by Brody coming in under the circumstances that he's in here with a tie-tie game going into extras. So seeing that Hildreth is uh, back up to the plate, we're going to have to deal and get ahead of this kid because he's doing well with a couple of hits already. One out, one on first base. Oh, the runner yeah. wasn't ready. Oh, he's back safe. He just barely got in as Jacob Bryan got caught napping. He didn't realize the throw was coming to the very last second. Greenfield thought they had him. He got it on TV. They want to appeal to the home plate umpire, but that's not going to work. No, they're not going to go for it. <laughs> he said that he was safe. Oh, Bryan, he was almost caught napping. That would have been a huge out for Greenfield. Would have been. Two outs with nobody on. Instead, runner on first with the one out. Here's the pitch. Squares to bunt, pulls it back, throw down to second base, and he is out. Oh, big throw right there by Devlin. Devlin guns him down. Two outs, nobody on. So they didn't get the pickoff play, but they do get the caught stealing. Two to four. Wow, that was a gamble right there by Coach Skinny Williams and Jacob Bryant to make that decision to go. I don't know if that was the right decision for them to take right now with a guy that was leading off the inning with a guy on first with only one out. Well, I'll tell you what, if Hildreth, if Hildreth gets an uh, extra base hit here, then it will really be questioned because an extra base hit would have scored the run. More than likely. Here's the windup. And the pitch to Hildreth, and that is a fastball low and away, 1-0. and oh. So Greenfield, they just barely missed picking up Jacob Bryant. They had a pickoff earlier in the game. And then they get the caught stealing right after that. Well, that was a beautiful throw right there by Kyle Devlin to be able to gun him down. Wind up by Baird. Here is the pitch. That's in the dirt low. Now, if you're... Brody Baird, you want to be able to get yourself ahead here. You don't want to get yourself behind, especially with a guy like Hildreth, because think about this. If he gets on his speed, he's got an opportunity to be able to score on an extra base hit, Jeff. Absolutely. So yeah. you've got to really think about a guy like him getting on the base pass. Waiting on deck is Garrett DeForest, yeah, no. but he may have to wait until the ninth or to the next game. Here's the set. The pitch. Ball four. Uh, now you got a guy on with some speed. Yeah, he's going to run here, Bobby, for sure. Oh, yeah. I know Devlin just threw out uh, Jacob Bryant, but I, I think Skinny's going to send him probably early in the count. Tom Sushnik now is going to come out to the mound. Now, uh, Here's that down there. And looks like they got, uh, is that a pinch hitter? Yeah. And for DeForest, there's number 22 is in here for Frontier. I will pull that up, Bob. Yeah, pull that up, because I don't have that one here, Jeff. Sorry. Uh, pinch hitter. This is Jarvis. This is Jarvis? Okay. So Jarvis is in for DeForest. Jarvis, a right-handed batter. Here's the number 22 big kid. Yeah. Oh, and he may be one of uh, Skinny Williams' weapons off the bench here. Baird now back on the rubber. Two outs, runner on first base. We'll see if Hildreth goes. He will go on this first pitch. Pitch is low, the throw down to second base. And it's too high in there safely, a stolen base. We knew, we saw that one coming, Bobby. We oh, knew. yeah. Question was, would it be on the first pitch or the second? But we knew he was going to go. Yeah. So he is now in scoring position with two outs here in the top of the eighth inning and a 3-3 three, three tie. And now, like we just said, getting a guy like Hildreth on the base pass now he's in scoring position. If Jarvis can be able to get even a blooper in, that could definitely score Hildreth, especially when he's running with two outs. Oh, yeah, two outs will be out. Absolutely, he's flying. He's off on contact. Here's the set by Bear. The pitch to Jarvis. Swung on a miss. That's a strike. One and one the count. Hildreth on second. Two outs. Frontier three, Greenfield three, top of the eighth inning. Baird, bearing down here, wants to get out of this jam. Here's the set. And a quick throw. No, he'll just turn and fake the throw. Diving back in is Hildreth. Uh, 
Big on. spot here for Nick Jarvis, though. Big spot. Paul Barnes is on deck. Here's the set. The 1-1 one, one pitch. Popped up right at the plate. Devlin on the first base side. Comes back and makes the catch. He hung with it. And that retires the side. Big play right there. And a nice job for Brody Baird to come in and to be able to get out of that eighth inning. We go to the last of the eighth inning. Greenfield with another chance to win it. Our score on the Greenfield Savings Bank scoreboard. Frontier 3, Greenfield 3 on Bear Country 95.3. Hey, they're bringing back, uh, bringing back Kaczynski again. Kaczynski's still still back going back after there. it. Still yeah. going after it, If it ain't broke, don't fix it. <laughs> yeah, really. I mean, he, huh? he only has like 45. He's, he's pretty How many? 45. Oh, he's only got 45 pitches, hey, bud. He's oh, so he's good. Oh, he's real good. <laughs> real low. Thanks for that update, bud. All hey, right. We've got Cam Bear leading off for Greenfield. Yeah. No kidding. <laughs> I have to write this one. What a game, hey. I know. <laughs> hey, at least we've got a good game, Philippe. We've got a great game. <laughs> I need to go yeah. home at some point. Yeah. yeah. Just the game. Maybe game this first kid will hit one out. 9 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday. Happy birthday. I've been working since 7.30 this morning. Hey, Why do people make us do that? It's not right. All right, Jeff Terrell and Bobby C. back here in the booth at Vets Field in Greenfield. Dave Reno, our studio producer. Uh, the fans are cold. It's It's been a very raw <laughs> yeah, night, but they up. have seen a really good ball game. And we're not done yet. Greenfield batting in the bottom of the eighth inning as we've gone to extras here. Frontier got a runner on second base with two outs in the top of the eighth inning, and I'm able to score on that nice play and a pop-up by uh, Kyle Devlin. And now... The third baseman, Cam Baird, will lead off for Greenfield. It's the fifth, sixth, and seventh batters here in the eighth. The first pitch to Baird, and that is a ball. Greenfield would love to end it right here in hand Frontier, their first loss since early in the year, in their first loss on the field. Again, their only loss this year was by forfeit. So a pioneer, here's the next pitch. That's low, ball two, two and all. Kuczynski's still out there. Well, I'll tell you, Baird has done a really nice job here today. A couple of nice base hits early. The wind up, and that's a call it strike. Two oh. and one. That was even a borderline ball three. Jared Hart is on deck. Here's the next pitch. That's in there for a call it strike. Wow. Wow, that was high, boy. That was a high, that was a high strike. Baird's thinking, I should be down at first base with the winning run. Yeah, those were both really high. Instead, two and two. Here's the pitch. Foul back to the screen. Count remains two and two. Three, three tie here in the eighth inning. Those weren't strikes early. <laughs> yeah, that was those those uh, those two strikes that were up there in the in the strike zone looked a little high. They were up there in the twilight zone. You know, a little tough spot right here for Baird. Here, he's got to be able to hang tough. This is what he's got to do right now. And as we see, Gashinsky, he deals real quick. So he doesn't give you much time to think when you're up there to play. You just got to get up there and hit the ball. Yeah, Garrett DeForest didn't go out there after that last pitch. Two balls and two strikes. Here's the pitch to Baird. That's fouled up to the screen on the right side. Count remains two and two. Ah, nice fight right here by Baird. Yeah, yeah, for the, for the sound. Yeah. He's had a good game. Greenfield and Frontier just going back and forth, toe to toe, punch, counter punch. 2 2 pitch. That's a line drive down the shortstop, taken on the fly. And that is put away by the shortstop, Bauman. Well, Jared Hart, him and Kyle Devlin, honestly, him, Devlin, and Hazel, the next three, they're due for hits right now, Jeff. If you're a Greenfield fan, you want to see something come on between these three guys. Well, now nobody on here in the bottom of the eighth inning, a 3-3 tie and a called strike to Jared Hart. You know, Jared Hart ended up scoring on that crazy play that ended up happening with the error that kept them to, in this game. There's the wind up the pitch. That's in there for a called strike. A nice, couple of nice pitches by Gachinski after he went 2-0 and on Baird. He's been dealing nothing but uh, strikes so far since then. 
Here's the windup, the 0-2 pitch. Ooh, close. Kaczynski wanted that one, but that's a ball. Well, he wanted it because on the last batter, the two were right there and they gave it to him. So that's why he wanted it now. One ball, two strikes. Here's the windup, the pitch. That's a ground ball towards the center of the diamond. The shortstop had it, lost it. Bauman, no throw. And reaching first base, Jared Hart with one out here in the eighth. He bobbled it right near the bag and Bauman could not make the play. Well, Devlin's up now. He flew out to center field. He also popped out to the catcher and a 1-3 from the pitcher to the first baseman. So he's 0 for 3 and he's definitely looking for some life here for the Green Wave offense. Kyle Devlin, the senior catcher, steps in on the right side. Frontier 3, Greenfield 3, last of the eighth inning. Runner on first with one out. Here's the set. First pitch to Devlin. It's in the dirt ball. Runner has to hold up at first as uh, DeForest is able to block that one, Bobby. Yeah, but I'll tell you right now, there's a big gap right now between first and second in the infield. I mean, if you could be able to punch it in between there. Yeah, if you get an outside pitch, take it that way. Absolutely. The set, the pitch to Devlin in there for a called strike. The count even now at one and one. With Freeman holding Hart over at first base, there's a huge gap between first and second. Here's the set, the one-one pitch. That ball is high, two and one. Nate Hazelton is on deck for the wave. One out with a runner on first. If Greenfield can score, it's over. Here is the set by Kaczynski. He checks the runner on first. Here's the pitch to Devlin. That's a ball three and one. And now Greenfield is one pitch away from having the winning run in scoring position. Yeah, this is a big time play right here. Big time at bat for Kyle Devlin. Kuczynski at the belt, throws the first base. Ooh, close, getting back in there though was Jared Hart, he was leaning. We've had a lot of guys with some close plays over <laughs> Christmas. This umpire's done a nice job and has definitely earned his catch tonight. He's done a really good job. Hart takes his lead, made it a little bit shorter this time. Here's the pitch to Devlin, in there, called strike. Oh, he thought it was ball four. It started to head towards first, but instead it was a full count. Oh, big spot right here for Devlin. One out, runner on first. Here's the set. The payoff pitch to Devlin. That's a ball four high. Runners on first and second with one out. The ball got away a little bit by Garrett DeForest and a wide turn at second by Harper. He'll duck back in there. And now Nate Hazelton with a chance to win the game for Greenfield right here. And is this it for Kaczynski? Skinny Williams is out there. What's he gonna do? What is he going to do? He's talking with him. DeForest is out there. I think he's going to stick with him. Well, I think the biggest problem is, is that his two relief pitchers were Santiago oh, bring and Kaczynski. Bring Kaczynski, Kaczynski will go to right. Going to go with Wakus? The right fielder will go to center. Wakus looks like he is the one yeah, who's going to come in and pitch. Yeah. Let's see who will take the hill. I think that's what they're going with. No, yep. Wakus came in. Yeah, he's grabbing his glove. He's yep. grabbing, yep, he's pitching. And Connor yeah. Wakus will try pitches. to get out of this jam. We're going to keep it right here during the pitching change, Bobby. So Greenfield now with a... Two wild pitches. <laughs> with Hart reaching with one out and then Devlin able to draw that walk. And let's see what kind of, uh, kind of pitches Connor Wakus has. He's got some speed, for sure. Oh, yeah. Oh, he's a center fielder. Center fielders have to have strong arms. Yeah. Just making sure they've got control. And that's the key right now. When you're sitting in a situation where you've got two runners on and only one out, you want your pitcher that's coming in to have some control. And that's exactly what Coach Skinny Williams is hoping that Wakus is going to be able to do. Uh, what are they, checking uh, uh, his wrist the man. thing on his wrist? Going to take that off? or? I think so. Because it's a, yep. Yeah, because it's a distraction. So they will have him remove that band on his uh, wrist there. 
I remember, I remember uh, years ago, um, they they were made it very very clear that they wanted to be able to have all pitchers be able to have everything off their body, they, even jewelry and everything. I mean, they yeah. have made that very clear, especially the MIAA. They've made that a rule for for baseball, and I think it's a good rule, though. You know, that way nobody can use an excuse of saying that they couldn't see because of a glare or whatever. Yeah, exactly. So. And Greenfield's going to have a pinch hitter up here. Uh, well, Hazleton's batting next. But it looks like they're going to have, oh, yeah, it's a Bro Brody Baird who came in the pitch. He's going to yeah. be batting in the spot that yeah, was once occupied, uh, occupied by the uh, number nine batter, Ryan Cody. He's yeah, because the game. Because it went from Cody to being hit by where Sack came in and got yep. that base hit. And then now Brody Baird's going to jump in. Yep. So. A bit of movement going on in that ninth position. Okay, so for Frontier, the previous pitcher, Gachinski is now in right field. Reno moves from right to center. Week is now in the pitch. Yeah, he's hit two more. He's in a jam. Yeah, Definitely in the jam here. here. So he's going to have uh, one more warm up pitch, and then he'll deal with Nate Hazelton with runners on first and second with one out. It's hard on second, Devlin on first, Frontier three, Greenfield three. Frontier hasn't lost since the opening week of the season. Greenfield needs this in a, in a big way. They need this win. They want to go to the tournament. This will really help them along. Absolutely. This is a huge, this is a victory that's huge in a lot of ways for Greenfield. If they can get it. If they can get it. That's a big if. Yeah, that's right. Well, they got to be able to get the timely hitting that they need right now. All right, Hazel steps in on the right side. Wakeus with a high set, the first pitch. And that is high. One and oh. So far tonight, all three of the at-bats for Hazelton have been in the infield. Here's the set, the pitch. Swung on a miss, strike one, one and one. There is a gap between first and second. The second baseman is really leaning more towards the bag. So it's right there, the right side for him. Here's the set. And the 1-1 one, one pitch to Hazelton. Swung out of this, right two. One ball and two strikes now with one out. And a 3-3 tie in the eighth. Nice job coming in here for Winkus so far. Here's the set. And the pitch, swung on a miss, strike three. So Hazelton is down swinging, two outs now. And here comes Brody Baird. Well, Brody Baird came in here, did a nice job in this last half inning pitching. Boy, what a big spot. Could be uh, the Baird brothers here. Some big timely hits. Just takes one here. Hart takes his lead. They take a look at him. Here's the pitch to Baird. That's in there. That is low for a ball, one and zero. Oh. If Greenfield can keep it going, they'll go back to the top of the order for David Carey. Here's the set. The pitch to Baird. That is high, 2-0. and oh. Ah. You don't want to get behind on batters. I'll tell you right now, the thing is, is now they're going to go to the top of the order. If Baird gets on. The set. The 2-0 pitch. Nearly a wild pitch. Nice stop there by DeForest on an outside pitch, but they've gone 3-0 now. I, I would have Bear take take two strikes here. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Why wouldn't you? You got your top of the order coming up. Yep. He's going to be, he'll definitely be taken here. We think. Here's the pitch. Ball four high. The bases are loaded. The winning run now for Greenfield, 90 feet away. Hart on third, Devlin on second, Baird on first, top of the order for David Carey. You know, Carey's got to use a little bit of patience here, though, Jeff. He's got to really use his head on this play, on, on this at bat, making sure that he really thinks things out. And now, Rakus will go to a full windup. Here's the pitch. It gets away. The runner, though, will hold on third. Hart started to come down, but the ball did not go far enough away from the catcher to Forrest. One and oh. Well, that's the one thing you got to do is you got to be able to make sure that you don't let that ball go past your catcher. 
One and oh, the count to carry. And the crowd really getting into it here. Three, three, time the eighth. The wind up and the pitch. That's a ball, ball two, two and oh. Well, this is where that walk becomes very important, Jeffrey. It's just like a base hit. Six consecutive balls by Wakeus. The 2-0 pitch in there for a called strike one. Two and one. Base is loaded. Last of the eighth inning, a 3-3 tie. Greenfield with a chance to win right here. The windup and the pitch. Called strike two. Two balls, two strikes with two outs. Wow. And now Carey's got to shorten up here and try to put the ball in play. The windup and the 2-2 pitch. That's a ball. No, that's three balls. Carey started to go down the first base. No, it's three and two. <laughs> it's three and two. He's really got himself focused in. Carey thought, Carey thought the game was over right there, but it's now it's three and two. One more ball and the game is over. Bases loaded. Two outs. Three and two to Carey. Game tied at three. Wakus. Here's the pitch. Ball fair high. It's over. Wow, what a game that we got to see here tonight. And Wakus is not happy. He is arguing with the home plate umpire. They're going to say that it was high. And Greenfield walks it off. Bases loaded walk in the last of the eighth inning. And the Green Wave wins it by a score of four to three. Bobby, what a game. What a game we got to see here tonight. And it came down to a walk to be able to win it for the Wave. All right, teams are going through the handshake line. We'll be wrapping up things here in just a minute. GCTV's Game of the Week is brought to you in part by Pine Hill Orchards on Greenfield Road in Coleraine. It's open seven days a week serving breakfast and lunch in the restaurant and in the store. There are homemade fruit and cream pies, apple cider, and so much more. For event information and what is happening at the farm, go to their website, pinehillorchards.com. Maury & Schmidt General Contractors is your local all-service contractor for commercial and residential work. Locally owned by Bob and Robin Provost, their work and reputation speaks for itself. For information and to see their work, go to their website, maurianschmidt.com, or call them at 773-3176. Cruise and travel located at Montague Street in Turner's Falls can help you with your next vacation plans. Let Deb and Mary help you through the process on booking your next vacation. At Cruise and Travel, we go the extra mile so that your miles become the best vacation ever. Call them today at 863-3143. Riffs North Restaurant and Bar, located at 116 Avenue A in Turner's Falls, has the best French fries in the state. Plus, they have 10 Massachusetts gourmet burgers you must try before you die. Local owner Rich Lyman invites you to stop in and try them. For hours and menu information, go online to riffsnorth.com. Dylan Chevrolet on Main Street in Greenfield is your local hometown dealership with the largest selection of Chevy cars and trucks. They also have the best service department in the Valley and an auto body shop too. Locally owned by Tom and Jay Dillon, you always get a good deal every day at Dillon Chevrolet. Thanks, folks. Greenfield Savings Bank is your local hometown bank. For personal and commercial accounts, stop by a local Greenfield Savings Bank location near you with locations throughout Franklin and Hampshire counties. Online at greenfieldsavings.com. Valley Steel Stamp, located at 15 Greenfield Road in the Industrial Park in Greenfield, is locally owned by Steve Capshaw. They are now hiring. Be a part of something big. For job information, go to vsscnc.com slash careers. Franklin First Federal Credit Union, located at 55 Newton Street in Greenfield at Franklin First 
First Federal Credit Union, you always get the best loan rates on home and auto, plus the best service from local people who live here in Franklin County. For more information, go to their website, franklinfirst.com. The Northfield Golf Club, located at 31 Holton Street in Northfield, is a beautiful nine-hole golf course offering a challenging golf experience seven days a week. Locally owned by the Snow family, they also have a beautiful pavilion for weddings, parties, or any occasion. Contact Shelby for more information at Shelby at NorthfieldGolfCourse.com. Manny's Appliance, 51 River Street in Greenfield, has the best selection of appliances in the area with local salespeople who care about you, the customer, with better prices than the big box store. Come in to see their huge selection at 51 River Street in Greenfield. Fitzgerald Real Estate, located at 116 Federal Street in Greenfield. Green Fitzgerald knows all about Franklin County and the local market. Let her professional team at Fitzgerald Real Estate help you through the process of buying or selling your home. For information online at FitzgeraldRealEstate.com or call 774-6317. Your local Dunkin' Donuts, locally owned by the Mata family with three Greenfield locations, including two drive through locations on Federal Street and also on the Mohawk Trail in Greenfield. America runs on Dunkin'.